Keeneland, a horse will always be measured in hands. Hands that see, that sense, that speak. Hands that hold our sport to a higher standard, not for our sake, but for theirs, for the love of the horse, for generations to come.
Welcome to today at Keeneland for another beautiful afternoon of racing here at Keeneland Racecourse. Scott Hazelton, Kate and Brad are with you. It is similar conditions, but the wind is definitely evident uh, here today. You can see the trees moving back behind us, but fast on the main track. Turf, once again, listed as good. And a new rail setting on the turf course. I don't believe we've seen this meet 10 feet out today for the turf course. That's where the rail sits. will be interesting. I haven't decided that there was a noticeable difference with the rail out at 20 feet, maybe a little bit more toward horses with tactical speed. Um, but otherwise, it's been pretty consistent, and I thought pretty fair across the board. We do have a Toyota Super High Five carryover. That's the final race of the day. It's a nine race card. So race number nine, over $2,800 carries in the Toyota Super High Five. $2,865 to be exact. So uh, make sure you're handicapping uh, to figure out those top five finishers. Take advantage of that uh, money that rolls over from yesterday. From yesterday's nightcap, Toyota Super High Five carryover, 2865 Yesterday, a great Wednesday of racing, and the lead story, no question, Corey Lannery getting win number 5,000 in his story career. He sits 38th in the all-time list as far as wins are concerned. Uh, he's nine ahead of Scott Spieth. Alex Solis, the Hall of Famer, sits just in front of him with 5,035, but quite a celebration from the colony with Corey Lannery with win 5,000. Appropriately, he did it on the rail, That's and right. uh, for Chris Hartman, heir of defiance. Um, delivered as expected. This was a clocker report special, also a Keeneland sales graduate, and also an angle play for me. I, I thought Arab Defiance was going to be really tough. We just had to accept a very short price. Beach Walkin, big price, $40 winner in race number seven for Ben Colbrook and Juan Machado, splitting horses, kicking on nicely, and they would go back-to-back -back on the card because they came right back with the first-time starter, Nick Storm, carrying the same silks that Nick's go to so many uh, did to so many uh, successes throughout his career, grade one successes, uh, Nick Storm, Colebrook, and Machado in the nightcap. This uh, was a pretty good-looking debut yeah. uh, at a nice price, too. Seven to one, Luan Machado picking up some momentum there with that uh, riding double, but he's kind of been consistently in the hunt. He's not too far off the top riders. Gaffleon and Saez, they are tied with a dozen wins apiece this meet. Flavian Pratt, he's four off that pace. Johnny Velasquez, I read Ortiz Jr., round out the top five. And Brad Cox, he's getting rolling. It took him some time to the expectations that are placed on an operation like Brad Cox at any meeting, especially at Keeneland. But he's now moved in to a two-way tie with Todd Pletcher. He has more left to send out, including today. But Pletcher also, even with sparing numbers of horses running, I think the rest of the way, still has some live runners coming up. So this is going to be an interesting race to the finish. And Ian Wilkes, um, I haven't remembered seeing him in the trainer standings at this fall meet in at least quite some time if ever so this has been a super meet for him he's got some opportunities today does ian wilkes and the majority of the names seen on that list as far as the jockey and trainer standings but uh, for the thursday weather here's wkyt well, we are going to have a cloudy Keeneland forecast ahead for us today as we are setting ourselves up for a little bit of rainfall to come in the evening. Now, it won't quite hit when Keeneland is open. It might start to come in towards that 6 o'clock hour, but overall temperatures are going to be in the mid-60s. Lots of cloud cover and some stronger wind gusts will be building throughout the meet. Good luck out there today, folks. Race number seven is our featured race, which we'll touch on in a moment. But let's take a look at our full card selections for the afternoon. It's going to be interesting. You can access <laughs> these always on the Keeneland Race Day app on your smartphone or tablet device. we start device. together. We do. Let's get the first double. Let's get the opening double of the day. And then race number six. And that'll do it for the top end selections. Oh, race, race eight. eight. Race me. eight. Uh, when we get toward the end, I think we have some, some horses in common. But this, this, I thought... I think I say this every day, but yeah. I really thought today in particular was a, a very tricky card. We have a turf pick three as well today, so I did not have one yesterday. Um, but back at it today, that very popular $3 wager, which we'll visit later on in the show. But uh, again, Keeneland Race Day app, download it right now on your smartphone or tablet device on social media give us a follow at keeneland racing on x facebook at keeneland instagram as well and then fandle tv give them a follow on x and download the fandle tv plus app that is available on your favorite connected device either roku amazon fire tv or apple tv and you'll be able to watch the live uh, video coverage and the uh, live uh, television coverage when it comes to FanDuel TV on the FanDuel TV Plus app. And as we gear up for the Breeders' Cup, you're going to want to make sure you have that at the ready because a lot of on-demand con on demand content. That's Roku, Amazon, Fire TV, Apple TV. Download FanDuel TV Plus if you have not already. 
Race number seven, as mentioned, is our featured events, part of the $3 Keeneland Turf Pick 3, part of the Pick 6, Pick 5, Pick 4, et cetera, et cetera. Scratch out the outside four runners, 13, 14, 15, 16, will not go. And to show you the wide-open nature of this race, look at the morning line. The number 10 is 4-1 to one on the morning line to be the favorite for Safi Joseph Jr. and Ken Ramsey. A winner here at Keeneland in the past, broke his maiden all the way back in 2021 during the fall meet. He's not run a lot since. He actually took a trip to Barbados and ran in the grade one uh, Barbados Gold Cup just two races back, but his comeback went, race was a win in Starter Allowance Company. I don't have him in my top three. I've got the six uh, Sir London on top for ammo racing and guitar racing. If you've paid attention to ammo racing throughout the course of this year, their runners are flying all over the world, winning races at Royal Ascot, winning races in New York. Here's a Colt by Malibu Moon. I'm taking you back a bit, back to uh, his maiden win. This is 2021, but I wanted to show a win in the ease in which he did it, uh, where he won by 10 lengths. He jumped into the deep end of the pool thereafter. He was highly thought of, remembering back to this afternoon of racing at Los Alamitos, obviously. He ran okay thereafter. He's now with Grand Motion. He's been at his Fair, Fair Hill uh, string Grand Motion up in Maryland with his last three workouts. But I'm leaning on his pedigree. He's a half-brother to three turf winners. And Grand Motion's so good with turf horses. I think that he can turn the corner today, get back into a good spot, uh, on the turf course, Tyler Gaffleone takes the call. I think a lot of reasons to like Sir London today for ammo racing and guitar racing. Lincoln Highway for Vicky Oliver. Here's the Saez Vicky Oliver angle again. Saez for the first time. Will he be aggressive? I thought the Saez Vicky Oliver horse ran well yesterday in the turf race. Maybe a little bit too far. That's what Vicky said to me. I can't remember the horse's name, but she said that Philly is a miler. And then the number two horse, uh, Mendel Secret for uh, Mike Maker away from Kentucky Downs, back to a mile and a 16th distance caught by Mendelssohn. So in a wide open event, six, four and two in the featured race for me. If, if this race were on the dirt, slam dunk for me to go with the six. I, I thought that horse looked well spotted. I just don't know uh, about the leap to the turf. It is a good angle for Graham Motion for sure. And I will say Sir London is one of only two horses in the race that I think will probably be on the lead or in the early stages. So that could be a very good thing. I uh, haven't seen a lot of gate to wire winners on the turf this meet, though. Um, I went to Lincoln Highway. You mentioned uh, him running a good race last time out and now getting a little bit more ground to work with. But what becomes key for me is this race here at Churchill Downs, his most recent start. Watch, he kind of gets pinched back. And then his rider takes a hold of him a little bit, tries to collect him and let him get his feet underneath him. In the process, the whole field runs away from him. And it was not a fast pace. Um, Lincoln Highway still, though, in traffic from the back of the pack, tries to weave his way through and will get within grasp of the leaders here before flattening out. I think having to rally like that into a soft pace was just too much for him. That's why the extra distance can certainly make a difference. And I also feel like he is probably going to be a little closer in the earlier stages, not on the lead, but just not last and out of touch with the pace setters. So Louis Saez picking up the mount. Um, is a really good thing, I think, in Lincoln Highway, to me, off of that trip, is the horse to bat uh, 10 to 1 on the morning line. I'd, I'd, I think it's going to be a little lower than that when all is said and done. Then I went to the 10, as you mentioned, American Diamond for Safi Joseph. Safi's been a little quiet this meet, uh, but he gets Johnny Velasquez here and a horse who's in winning form, and though he is stepping up, he has won previously at Keeneland. And then I used the two Mendel Secret as... One of the two pace setters in this race, but a horse who does have um, a win. In fact, a very consistent record on the turf. I don't know if he can go all the way on the front end, but I think he could be around for a long time. It's a tough little race. I mean, McPeak's got one in there that would make sense. The eight horse. I wouldn't be surprised if the Calhoun runner uh, shows something today on the turf course with the addition of blinkers. Um, it is a very, very good race. And the, the depth of it makes the multi-race exotic wagers and endeavors all that more worth it to jump in because if you're right it's likely going to be a good price i i mean i i wouldn't be surprised if the favorites three to one seven to two i, I agree and this this race kicks off the late pick three but it's also a pivotal race in terms of the pick four obviously and uh the pick five and pick six uh i i think this could be the one that separates uh, in a lot of cases because it's so competitive for more on the featured seventh event here's tom leach 
Going to talk about a little bit of a price play here in the allowance feature on today's card in Lincoln Highway. Vicki Oliver's the trainer. Any uh, excuse in the last race? Um, yeah, he had a actually a terrible trip, and uh, he was sitting relatively close, and then he kind of got drugged back, and the pace was so slow, and by the time he got him out, and he was running late, but it was just too late, and they had gone too slow up front. The tough group that he caught the race before and ran well. Yeah, I ran very well. I've always thought a lot of this horse. He has a lot of ability. He still has a lot to learn. Um, the family's only gotten better at four and five, so I expect each race to be an improvement. Tell me about how he's trained off that last race. He's been training great. If I hadn't gotten in this um, grass race, I was actually going to probably try him on the dirt. But he's been training unbelievable, and I'm, I, I look for a big effort. Good luck. Thank you. Vicki Oliver, she'll settle Lincoln Highway in the allowance feature. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you, Vicki. Uh, training for her father, G. Watts Humphrey Jr. That's one of the luxuries, many luxuries that Vicki has. She's familiar with these families. These are established Watts Humphrey families that we see year in and year out. So, And, it, and family tends to, to lean in that direction of, of success or failure. Well, I think that's one of the unique aspects of the game, right? That we have so many families that it continues on with the with sons and daughters getting into the game, if not as owners and breeders, as trainers, or in other aspects of it. But I, I think that's what makes it as strong as it is. Uh, let's go on to race number eight. Uh, late double begins with the eighth race, an $80,000 claiming event. Nom one is a two lifetime. There is a scratch of the number 12 horse fast fall. JR's gift is the morning line favorite for Hugo Andrade. Uh, coming off of a second against similar company, similar level at Churchill Downs and a 75,000 non-two claimer uh, runs for 80 today. Intercha interchangeable level. Uh, I think uh, we could say that safely and uh, will say that. But in this race, I, I end up going to a horse to the outside. I go outside to inside beginning with the 11 horse Winnemac Avenue for Jimmy DeVito, a runner that uh, drops in for 80 off of an allowance try last time out, should sit forward. Gaff Leone has to work over from this outside draw today, but this was a strong effort. He, he gets headed late, but he digs back in for double down stables in the black and white of double down. Uh, and you can see he's going to end up finishing third in this race. So uh, I like this runner today uh, here this afternoon for Jimmy DeVito, uh, Taprit Gelding, who the one race he tried him on grass, he was okay. He didn't run terrible, but he's run better on the, the main track and especially at these uh, sort of short-ish route races, if you will. It's the typical route distance that we get mile, mile and a 16th, mile 70. So I think Winnemac, Winnemac Avenue with Gaff Leone, I'll go in that direction, showing up for 80,000 today. And then the inside two runners, Princely, that's a horse that uh, has run for 50 non two and even starter company. You got to respect him with Julian Le Peru and the number two horse gamer trying dirt. The surface change for a son of twirling candy. Uh, he's done nothing but run on synthetic and turf. Oftentimes we'll see horses just find new life and turn things around with a, a simple surface change. So I'll take my shot there with the Keeneland graduate gamer in the third slot. 11 one two for race eight. You and I are on the same horse to start with the 11 Winnemac Avenue does look awfully tough. I think the layoff is going to help and the extra distance. He's proven that he can carry his speed at those longer distances. And I think it's just a little too much at the mile. Even though it was a two-turn mile at Ellis Park, I thought the pressure kind of got to him at the end. I don't know if he's going to have as much pressure in here. There is not an abundance of early speed. You do have uh, the three to the inside and perhaps the 12, but with the scratch of the 12, it makes it a little easier for any of the horses like the 11 who have a little tactical speed. I also liked the six, Honed, who, um, like the 11, is dropping in for a claiming price first time, Kenny McPeak. Uh, he's actually competed in graded stakes and was second in the Iroquois in a second start. So there's a little back class there. And then the three, Dance Samo, kind of interesting. That was the other horse that I thought could buy for the early lead and maybe even get it with that inside post position. I don't know if he's quite as good as the 11 mm -hmm. and a couple others, but because there's not a lot of speed and the fact that he's in good form, I think you have to respect him. So I used 11-6-3 in that eighth race. Let's go back uh, early in the card. Race number two, another key race of the day. They're all key races, but this is one we wanted to take a peek at. The number, uh, second race, maiden $150,000 claimer. There are some scratches in here and key ones at that. The 6-7, 11, and 13 out. She spun is the morning line favorite now for Steve Asmussen and the Heilig Broats. And Keith James Asmussen rides for his father, debuting today, the daughter of Mo Heyman, uh, coming in with uh, a, a quick workout on the 6th of October. 
as we sit on the 19th, I would imagine there'd be a maintenance workout after that, as typically is the pattern for Steve Asmus. And you got to keep that in mind with drawing these races seven days out. If you access your past performances, uh, sometimes you don't have them in them. So uh, as far as she spun seven to two, just a, a wide open race, another maiden 150,000 claimer. And yesterday we had one of these and it was the, the Colbrook first time starter that was able to win Nick's go. So Nick's uh, storm, excuse me. I will say that this was a, a, an important race for me. I really liked Gloriette a lot in here. Um, with Gloriette out of the mix, the four in good taste, a first time starter becomes, in my opinion, the horse to beat. She was the one I was most worried about because she is a first timer and a homebred at that for Barry and Joni Butts. So um, they can do whatever they want mm -hmm. with her and running her for 150000 when you consider that the the price to get to Tapature, $7,500, uh, was not too bad. So um, I, I think that uh, the workout pattern is strong, and Brad Cox uh, teaming up with Florent Giroux has been a good combination historically. Also, when Brad debuts in these maiden claimers, he's usually spot on. Although he has had a couple tough beats in uh, some maiden claiming races, this meet at very, very short prices, but the four in good taste makes some sense. The Tapature is a 14% sire with two-year-old first-time starters. The nine controlled temper has experience, and in some of these maiden races, that has really counted a lot. Tyler Gaffleone getting the call for Dallas Stewart, who is winning at 40% from a limited number of starters at this meet. He's been loaded this, this season from uh, a few horses that have run, and they've Scored at big prices, too, and this is a first time in for a claiming price angle for the nine controlled temper. And then the three she spun is a first timer for Steve. I think you mentioned this uh, for Steve Asmussen. Um, with maiden claimers, 22 percent. And when they debut in maiden claiming races, 24 percent. So that's actually a, a really strong angle that I hadn't been paying much attention to. But I think uh, this filly looks like she's well spotted. That's race number two, second leg of the early pick five, first leg of that early pick four today at Keeneland, two-year-old fillies. They'll be going six furlongs, maiden $150,000 claiming event. Let's get into our clock report uh, for this morning's today at Keeneland, and we'll go to race number three. It's a starter allowance uh, condition, six and a half furlongs for fillies and mares, three and up. And Girl Afraid, the number five horse for Robert Falcone Jr., a sharp Keeneland workout, Hot Barn top rider Shrewd Claim. They claimed this horse for 40000 came back and ran a good race in starter allowance uh, company uh, last time out on the 31st of August at Saratoga. So Falcone had an allowance win Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, with uh, a yes. good run in a, in a tough little race. And uh, this one kind of near and dear to our hearts. She's an Illinois bred, bred by Sharon Kirby, the Kirby family. Oh, wow, that's a name so flash from the past. <laughs> Seven-year-old mare making her 56 start. And in race number seven, American Diamond uh, working three furlongs in 35 and two, best of three at the distance, shown morning speed and has a maiden special weight win over the course, running in good form. That's the Safi Joseph Ken Ramsey runner who ran in the Barbados Gold Cup uh, two starts back and comes off of a win against the Starter Allowance Company. So the clock report pointing you towards race three, the five, race seven, the ten. Race number five begins the $3 Keeneland Turf Pick 3. Ask for it by name if you're playing it. If you're using a self-service terminal, it's its own event. You've got to look for the Keeneland Turf Pick 3 as really its own race. That's the best way of putting it if you're using the self-service terminal. It's a good sequence. We start with two-year-old fillies sprinting on the turf course. Maiden special weight event. I'll go four deep. Make up for Asmussen moving over to the grass. I think it's the distance as much as anything with a lot of these two-year-olds wanting them to go a little bit shorter of a distance versus having to go further than the five and a half. So makeup showed something on debut in the mud and then finished second beat in six, six lengths. The number six horse, uh, Dr. Ray D for maker uh, experience coming in. There's nothing wrong with, in my opinion, with what she's done in against Maiden Special Weight Company, against this Maiden Special Weight group. Keneally with Beautiful Mischief moving over to the grass for the first time. She's a half-sister to a turf winner, so the pedigree's there. And then Shore War, Rusty Arnold saying she just didn't take to the dirt, and she wants turf. So I spoke to Rusty last night, and that's what he said about the Omaha Beach Philly with Martin Garcia in the saddle. So uh, consider the eight in race five. Too deep in race number seven. Uh, to try to keep it a little bit more on the f affordable side, the four and the six, Lincoln Highway and Sir London. 
And then in race number nine, which will close out the card and close out this $3 turf pick three, the two modern sound for Chris Block. Said she was a bit short on fitness for the mile last time out, but she shortens up today. That's what Block had to say. Her trainer to me, uh, wonder wave for Brian Lynch. Two solid runs on turf will get respect and should. And then the 10 horse cloud walker for board short stables and Brendan Walsh, a filly they bought for 220, 220,000 earlier this year at a two year old sale. And uh, Flavian Pratt is in the saddle. Uh, Travis Borsma of Board Short Stables. Uh, he has spent some money as of late in the game, and great to have him here in Kentucky competing. Uh, he is of Dutch Brothers Coffee fame, if you're familiar with that, a West Coast chain that uh, is very, very popular. I am not, but I'll have to explore when I'm there for the for the Breeders' Cup. Here's your late pick four. Uh, you and I have a lot of common horses on this ticket, and I don't see any singles. Um, sixth race. Three and the four. The Queen's Jewels likes this track and uh, certainly has a shot, especially with the scratch of the sixth derby date. But shoot or shoot is going to be really tough in there. I know you're going to talk more about that one coming up. The seventh race uh, is that first level allowance. I went to the four Lincoln Highway and used the 10. So similar horses there. Uh, that's American Diamond that I did throw in uh, to the mix. Just in case, the eighth race, three Dance Samo, the six. Honed and the 11 top pick for both of us, Winnemac Avenue. And then in the ninth race, this is where I think you want some coverage. I mean, I, you want coverage through the whole thing, but this is where I think there's the most level of uncertainty. Um, so I'm using the one charm of the song on the rail for Ian Wilkes, the two modern sound, the four wonder wave, who I think can run much better, beaten favorite last time out, nine and 10. Cloudwalker, a first-time starter for Brendan Walsh. $30. If you have a bigger bankroll, get some coverage in race nine. Our sales grad spotlight, race number five, that uh, first leg of the Keeneland Turf Pick 3. We're going to take a look at Into the Stars as she passed through the sales ring here at Keeneland last year in the September sale. Into the Stars, daughter of Into Mischief out of the stakes-winning first damn star billing, that daughter of Dynaformer. She, a producer of two winners from Florida Race, so a proven family. And she's by Into Mischief. A lot of times that's all you need to know. $250,000 uh, owned by Cheyenne Stables and the Lich family. And this one bred by Mount Brilliant. So Into the Stars, the Keeneland Sale grad spotlight in race number five. Best angle of the day, race number six. We head there, $50,000 claiming event, a scratch derby date, the six and the nine. Call me midnight. He'll be running this weekend. According to Keith DeSormo, he's entered on Saturday. Uh, Shooter Shoot, the number four horse you mentioned, I was going to talk about him. Uh, he might be the best horse or one horse that I'd lean towards just to, for a straight-up win bet. I'm going to make it uh, uh, an exacta here, as you'll see. But uh, he and the number two horse, uh, Mailman Money for Chris Hartman, I think are the best sprinters in this race. And Shooter Shoot, in his most recent race, uh, ended up down on the inside. Maybe not the best place to be at this point in the race meet at Churchill Downs. He's got a lot of back class. At one point in time, he was thought to be, or looked like he was going to be a, a maybe a derby type horse. He ran against uh, some very good runners in the in the Grade Three uh, Palos Verdes in the San Carlos. He's staying at these higher level claimers at the age of six, and I think as much as anything, it's about the competition he catches today. So I'll go four over two if you want to play him straight up to win. I would recommend that. He was third to Trafalgar in that 62-5 claimer, $62,500 claimer last time out. I think he wins today, but also played an exact in race six. And uh, now I have to make a correction because I put down the wrong number and did left out my angle horse of the ninth race coming up for that last leg of the pick four. So it would be bad to not use the horse that you think has the best shot to win. <laughs> uh, this is a maiden two-year-old filly race at five and a half furlongs on the turf. And I went to a first-time starter, the seven, Copper Drop, uh, with Steve Asmussen and Ricardo Santana Jr. coming up. This filly's by Copper Bullet, um, who is a prolific sire of very fast horses, yeah. as you know. Um, but out of a mare, Teardrop, who has produced some real runners, stakes winners, all of them, Costa Terra, Pneumatic. The Dam was a first-out winner and stakes winner as well. And then Echo, again, who we're going to take a look at, who um, won the Oaks. She... She's a very, very fast filly. Here she is at Saratoga in a winning effort, but she came close in graded stakes company um, in the Oaks. Uh, I believe it was uh, the Indiana Oaks, if I'm not mistaken. But going back a little way, you see how fast this filly is to be able at Saratoga to win 
three quarters of a mile and 109 and change. And the fact that you get Copper Bullet, who is the son of More Than Ready, tells me turf might be okay. But I just think based on the workouts that Copper Drop has some early speed and has been working really well out of the gate in a little atypical workout pattern for a Steve Asmussen first-time starter. Um, a couple of works at the gate, and both of them seemingly very fast in close proximity to each other. It's a little unusual. I think Copper Drop is well meant today. So add that one in to spend a little extra money and add that one on that pick four ticket. It's good to be Ron Winchell in a lot of ways, but you look at his breeding operation, he has so many really, really good tap it mares. Yeah. And they work so well with Gunrunner, but you've got Copper Bullet who's come along. This is his first crop. This is really part of it. Changing things up a little bit. You can't go to Gunrunner every time. you got to try some of these other stallions. And Copper Bullet's had a really good start. 14% uh, first out winners, 18% winners on the turf. Those are good numbers. I, very good. And I, I think a little bit more versatility toward the turf than perhaps the Gunrunners initially. And I, that might be in part because of Gunrunner being such a good dirt runner yep. that uh, you're not thinking about turf horses. Here's Tom Leach for his long shot. Long shot play in today's card comes in the ninth race. It is the three horse Satin Blue. Satin Blue didn't show much first time out of Kentucky Downs, but he took some money. Seven to one that day. And I think there was a thought that there's something there. Horse didn't get the best of trips. Second try here gets Luis Saez in the saddle. Trainer Joe Sharp, good numbers in turf sprints. So let's take another shot with Satin Blue. Hey, Kentucky Downs run, oak hit, not great. Give her a pass. That's fine. I'll take it for Tom Leach. Good luck to Tom and the rest of y'all. A lot of those horses have done that, too. Some yeah. like it, run really well, Some don't. but others just uh, improve when they get over here. For Kate and I'm Scott. Enjoy a wonderful nine race card today at Keeneland. Don't forget the $3 Keeneland turf pick three is back starting in race number five. There are more than 3,500 reasons buyers came to Keeneland November last year. Because as you look to the future, this is where you'll find whatever you're looking for. And then some. And then some more. The place you have to be to find the one you have to have. Join us as the world comes to Keeneland, November 8th through the 16th. Browse the catalog at november.keeneland.com. Toyota began a revolution over 20 years ago with this iconic name, the Prius. A revolution that saved 139 million tons of greenhouse gas emissions, leading the way toward carbon neutrality as part of Toyota's Beyond Zero Vision. With more electrified choices, including hybrid versions of the best-selling Camry and RAV4 and the new battery electric BZ4X, Toyota is electrified, diversified, and we're always looking to make a positive impact on the planet and society. Toyota, let's go places. She's all the talk. I bet five million three. Three? Three in the ring of three in the ring of two. Here in the ring of three. Where are five million two? Five million three. On EC now, five million three. Three, four, four. Go ahead, ease four. Four million five. Four million four. Four million five. Oh my. Four million four. I got five million five. Five million six. Ready, six all three. Well, thank you what you did do. Five million five and in the back. Five million five hundred thousand. And good luck. Keeneland, a horse will always be measured in hands. Hands that see, that sense, that speak. Hands that hold our sport to a higher standard, not for our sake, but for theirs, for the love of the horse, for generations to come.
Keeneland welcomes Lexi Brady to the paddock. Lexi is a recent graduate of the University of Kentucky where she majored in arts administration and theater and minored in dance. She wants to thank Keeneland for this opportunity and remind everyone to support the arts. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as you are able for our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fire Keeneland is proud to recognize Leah Ellis with Culinary as the employee of the day. Congratulations, Leah. In the event of an emergency, Keeneland is dedicated to ensuring the safety of our patrons. This video illustrates the proper evacuation protocol from all locations in the Keeneland Grandstand facility. Depending on the nature of the emergency, directions may be altered. Please remain calm and follow the direction of guest services and security personnel. Patrons should never use elevators during an evacuation. Patrons in the corporate boxes, Eclipse Room, and Phoenix Room should exit using the stairway located near Elevator A. Proceed down the stairs to the ground floor and veer right to exit through the lower club entrance. Patrons in the Lafayette Room, Keeneland Room, Lexington Room, and Kentucky Room should exit using the stairway located near Elevator B. Proceed down the stairs to the ground floor and exit through the paddock area using the east gate. Patrons in the third floor main clubhouse and clubhouse paddock dining rooms should exit using the stairway located near elevator A. Proceed down the stairs to the ground floor and veer right to exit through the lower club entrance. Patrons in the bluegrass room and third floor ITW area should exit using the stairway located near elevator B. Proceed down the stairs to the ground floor and exit through the paddock area using the east gate. Patrons in the finish line room and green room should exit using the stairway leading to the north terrace. 
proceed down the stairs to the second level and through the doors outside. Proceed down the stairs to the ground level and exit through the north gate. Patrons in the outside reserved grandstand seats and boxes should proceed down the nearest stairway to the ground level. Proceed under the grandstand towards the paddock area and exit via the nearest point of exit, the south gate or the east gate. Patrons in the second floor main clubhouse dining room and life members room should exit using the stairway on the south side of the administrative offices. Proceed down the stairs to the ground floor and exit through the south gate. Patrons in the second floor clubhouse paddock dining room and clubhouse tavern should exit using the stairway located near elevator A. Proceed down the stairs to the ground floor and veer right to exit through the lower club entrance. Patrons in the mezzanine bar and second floor ITW area should exit using the stairway located near elevator B. Proceed down the stairs to the ground floor and exit through the paddock area using the east gate. Patrons in the sports bar and cantina should exit through the doors leading to the north terrace. Proceed down the stairs to the ground level and exit through the north gate. Patrons in the lower club, clubhouse lawn, club lobby, and director's room should proceed toward the clubhouse parking lot using the nearest point of exit. Patrons in the gift shop should proceed toward the south gate using the nearest point of exit. Patrons in the apron area should proceed under the grandstand towards the paddock area and exit via the nearest point of exit, the south gate or the east gate. Patrons in the equestrian room and first floor brats and brew should proceed towards the north terrace and exit through the north gate. Patrons in the paddock area and North Terrace should proceed toward the nearest point of exit, the South Gate, East Gate, or North Gate. After evacuating the facility, please remain calm and follow the direction of guest services and security personnel in the safest route to return to your vehicle. Thank you for your attention and cooperation.
Good afternoon. Welcome to Keeneland Racecourse. We begin with a check of the track and turf conditions for the day presented by John Deere. The main track is listed fast, the turf listed good, and the rail at 10 feet on the turf course. Now the changes as they presently stand for the card. First race where the first of the day's rolling doubles and pick threes begin. It's also the start of the early pick five. In that opener today, scratch number six, ain't straight. Also scratch number eight, all jokes aside. And scratch number nine, run, run, rapid dash. That's in the first race, scratch the six, ain't straight. Scratch number eight, all jokes aside. Scratch the nine, run, run, rapid dash. Also, there's a jockey change in the first race. The jockey for number four, Raymond Luan Machado. First race, number four, Raymond, jockey, Luan Machado. Wave the bug. The weight is 121 pounds, 121. Second race, that's the start of the early pick four. Scratch number six, Gloriette. Scratch the seven, Backwoods Barbie. Scratch 11, Tappen into Genius. And scratch number 13, City Shack. That's in the second race. Scratch the six, Gloriette. Scratch number seven, Backwoods Barbie. Scratch the 11, Tappen into Genius. And scratch number 13, City Shack. Third race. No changes at this time. Fourth race is where the pick six begins. No carryover for the pick six today. But in that fourth race, scratch the seven, Segoy. That's the fourth race. Scratch number seven, Segoy. Race five, start of the late pick five. Also the start of the Keeneland Turf pick three, made up of races five, seven, and nine. In race five, take out the also eligibles 13 through 16, they did not draw into the race. Sixth race, start of the late pick four. Scratch number six, Derby Date. Scratch number nine, Call Me Midnight. That's in the sixth race. Scratch number six, Derby Date. And scratch number nine, Call Me Midnight. Seventh race feature, Take out the also eligibles, 13 through 16. They did not draw into the race. Eighth race. Scratch number 12, fast fall. Again, that's in the eighth race. Scratch number 12, fast fall. There's a jockey change on the nine, bright spark. That'll be James Graham. That's the eighth race, number nine, bright spark. The jockey, James Graham. Ninth and final race, carryover for the Toyota Super High Five, $2,865. In that ninth event, scratch number eight, She's a Native. Also scratch number 13, Destiny Star. Scratch 15, Tipsy Runner. And scratch 16, Street View. That's the ninth and final race. Scratch number eight, She's a Native. Scratch number 13, Destiny Star. Also scratch number 15, Tipsy Runner, and scratch the 16, Street View. Please note, number 14, Luminous Ruler, will run. Number 14, Luminous Ruler, draws into the race. And those are the current program changes. Time now to check in with Scott Hazelton and Caton Bradar. Thank you so much, Kurt. Good afternoon to you. And those of you joining us here on course and from abroad, we have nine races in front of us at Keeneland Race Course. Uh, Cool-ish conditions. The wind is certainly more significant than it was yesterday. Yesterday, it seemed as though the wind was never involved at all over the course of the afternoon. But uh, we do have a breeze here in the area. And uh, the main track, fast turf listed as good. Rail set at 10 feet on the turf. New rail setting uh, with that at 10 feet. So it'll be interesting to see how the turf course plays. It has been... Pretty fair overall, I think, through the meet, although maybe with the rail out 20 feet and 30 feet, it was a little leaning toward horses with some tactical speed. I think that could change with it in at 10 feet. Turf pick three back in play here today. That's races five, seven, and nine. The second leg of that is our featured event. It's race number seven on the card. This is a first-level allowance race at a mile and a 16th and a wide-open race. American Diamond coming in off of a win at Kentucky Downs, the 4-1 to morning line favorite, but cases to be made for so many of these runners in our featured seventh. 
Yeah, the seventh race is, uh, I think, a race where you and I are in agreement about a couple horses. Uh, the four Lincoln Highway at 10 to 1 in the morning line is a horse that um, I'm hoping we get 10 to 1 on for Vicki Oliver. Uh, Luis Saya is involved in that heated battle for leading jockey aboard uh, the four. And I, and I have quite a few live mounts for him today. I think you said yesterday uh, you were leaning on Louis. I'm hoping that uh, it it works out a little bit better today because I thought he had some live mounts. I do too. I feel the same. I, f I feel like the, the whole week Saez is, is live, but that's what you come to expect with one of the best riders in the game and uh, the best colony in racing here at Keeneland for this fall meet uh, with folks like Saez, Gaff Leon, Velasquez, and all of them. It is the best of the best. Race number one coming up in 19 minutes. Don't forget the nightcap. We do have a Toyota Super High Five carryover. That's race number nine. Toyota Super High, carry Super High Five carries from yesterday. $2,865, the opener at the top of the hour. There's a look at the number 10 horse, Must Be Love, for Bing Cherry Racing and trainer Michael Pino. Has had a workout here at Keeneland since coming in from the East Coast. Uh, raced last at Delaware, has been working at Monmouth Park, spent some time in the summer at Parks Racing just outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But tough to overlook this gelding's current form, um, either at levels like this or even slightly above. Shows up for $20,000. I think the right level for must be love in here and the handicappers handicappers are responding at nine to five right now on the number 10 horse and there is Luis Saez his first opportunity of the afternoon um, who will be riding the number 10 today yeah the, with the class drop and the recent form it's hard to look past the scalding he was second beaten just a length at Delaware against a tougher group in theory um, he was the beaten favorite that day and he has been the beaten favorite in this last couple races but he always gets played I think because he is so consistent what I like about him in this spot is that he can sit close to the pace. And I think, at least yesterday, if that was any indication, in the sprint races especially, you've got to be forwardly placed. What's up, bro? The number two horse for Larry Ravelli comes off of a win at Thistledown against Namwood as a three company in a six furlong sprint. That was a $25,000 claimer. Prior to that, running against New York Breads, as this is a New York Bread. So it's just a matter of if that type of race... It should be good enough, but obviously Thistle Downs to Keeneland is a step up, but this looks to be the right level and the right group for him to keep things rolling for Ravelli, and he's 9-5 to five as well, so two 9-5 to five shots right now for race one. Some of those New York Red races can come up awfully tough, and uh, he was competitive in New York Red Stakes Company, so I give him a, a shot, a good shot in here at, at 20,000 claiming. He's not making that big of a jump from what he was competing at uh, at Thistledown when he was able to win in the non-winners of three category. He has, at least he showed speed that day. And you wonder if um, since coming to Larry Ravelli's barn, where Ravelli's program was kind of geared more toward those front runners, they seem to really show speed regardless uh, that what's up, bro, definitely could be part of the early pace and is in good form. I also thought that the three... Um, Right next to him, Healing Waters was interesting. Again, a little bit of tactical speed coming out of five and a half furlong races over at Horseshoe Indianapolis for Will Walden. Two good races in those state bread allowance company. Similar to the two, this is a question of whether the Indiana bread competition can be comparable to the claiming competition here. I really think it can. And Healing Waters is another very consistent horse in good form. I like the placement by Will Walden absolutely in here. Nine to two is a very good price. That's to me some value in race number one, but by no means is this an easy event with the presence of the 10 and the two, especially for the three healing waters. Race number one, less than 15 minutes to post. This group is saddled up, ready to begin the first of two pick fives on the card at Keeneland.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's first race, a claiming race for three-year-olds and up. The price, $20,000, six furlongs over the fast main track. In the opener, scratch the six, ain't straight. Also scratch number eight, all jokes aside, and scratch the nine, run, run, rapidash. First race starts the first of the day's rolling doubles and pick threes. Also begins the early pick five. Main track is fast. The turf listed good. The rail at 10 feet on the turf course today. Post time for the opener in six minutes. There's a look at Fabricator for Daddy's Dip Racing Stable. Trainer Joel Campbell leaning on jockey James Graham. And this is a horse coming off of a win at Prairie Meadows. Joel Campbell, his conditioner, admitting to me this is a big step up in class. Feels like he's a horse that could get a piece of it, but he wonders if he's good enough here today. You know, I think he's up against it from a pace standpoint because I think he's going to do his best running late. And I think this field may get away from him a little bit in the early stages, so makes it harder. But he looks so good on the track, Scott, that I have to throw him into some exotics and point him out here. On the track, he's got his head bowed. He was like this in the paddock, too. Just kind of prancing and proud of himself. And if he is in a different league of competition, he doesn't seem to know it. He's still strutting his stuff. So maybe a play underneath uh, some of the logical horses here. Must be loved, the 10, 2-1, to one, Saez for Pino. We talked about him listening to some of the trainers down here that were getting set to take this horse on, sp speaking to each other. They, they know that this is the horse to beat. I, you know, he looked like the horse to beat in the paddock, too. He, he's well turned out. He's sharp. Um, he was on his toes, but not over the top. Um, love the rider, Luis Saez, picking up the mount here. I think he'll be a good fit for the gelding because he is a good judge of pace and he'll be able to know whether to get into the race right away or to sit a little bit off of it. Seems like must be love can do it either way. Healing Waters is now 2-1. to one. He's taken some play as of late. He's actually vying for favoritism now. There are three horses at 2-1 to one on the tote board. Uh, Will Walden, his conditioner, I asked him why he decided to bring this horse down from Indiana uh, to run here, and he said, well, it's, sometimes it's hard to get Indiana breads in races up there because it, this one is not an Indiana sired horse, and they run those races before they do the straight Indiana breads. He's the son of Midnight Loot, which makes him Indiana bred, but not Indiana sired. He shows up for 20 today. He's running for a big purse of 44000 which is more than what he did in his last two races. And he's actually a horse, one of 277 horses that will be uh, offered at the Keeneland Horses of Racing Age sale immediately after the November sale on the 17th of November. He's hit 4261, consigned by Denali Stud. Uh, he's a good horse and a horse that I think folks will gravitate towards, certainly at that sale and today in wagering race number one. You know, one. he's so consistent that you have to respect him in any spot, even outside of Indiana restricted competition. Um, he is running at the highest level that you can run at and now gets an opportunity to compete against horses who are in for that $20,000 claiming price. So... Um, I, I think he makes a lot of sense in here. I'm a little surprised he's two to one co-favorite right now with the 10, but I do think that he is one of the top contenders. 
And I wouldn't be shocked to see him on the lead. He's coming out of the shorter races, the five and a half furlong races that have been pretty quick. So he's probably going to be on or very, very close to the lead. Very competitive race. As you can see, the tote board telling you that. Three horses at two to one. Slight favoritism to the number 10 horse. That is must be love. Good luck. Pick five begins. The early pick five. The pool already over $200,000. The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's first race, start of the early pick five. Moving into line for the first. Raymond moves into the gate. Cataperi comes forward. Two more to load. Lucky dude goes in. Must be love, the last one. Goes in, they're at the post. They're off. There goes Healing Waters. Must be love as they're on the outside. What's up, bro? Kicks in down to the inside. Must be love and what's up, bro? They go at it for the early lead. Raymond moves up to challenge for third to the outside of Healing Waters. Then a gap of three more lengths back to Lucky Dude, who travels in the fifth position, followed by Cataperi. And then Fabricator at the back as this field moves on to the far turn to get things started on this Thursday card. It is What's Up Bro with a narrow lead opening quarter. 22.48 seconds must be love. A half length off the lead in second gap of two. Raymond tracks in behind that front pair in third. Then a gap of five. Healing Waters is fourth a half length. Lucky Dude fifth on the outside of that one. It is followed by Cataperi. Fabricator the distant trailer. They turn for home. What's Up Bro has the lead. Has it by two and a half lengths. Raymond now goes to second. And tries to come after the leader coming to the eighth pole. But what's up, bro? Has the lead by three. Raymond is second by five. And then comes Cat of Perry, who is in a scramble for third out in the center of the track. But the leader's already at the 16th pole. What's up, bro? Jareth Loveberry in front by three and a half. And then Raymond in second. And then Healing Waters and Cat of Perry. But no catching. What's up, bro? Who wins it? Raymond was across the line in second. Healing Waters third, 112.37.
Well, a Ravelli speedster. How many times have we said that in recent history? And what's up, bro? The number 10 ho two horse took pressure from the 10 horse early on, dispenses of him and finds plenty late under Jareth Loveberry. Look at the late money that came in. Even money on what's up, bro? Uh, by the time they crossed the finish line, two straight victories and fast out of the gate, big under the wire. The unofficial winner of Keenla's first race, number two, What's Up Bro, finished first. The four, Raymond, was second. Number three, Healing Waters, third. And number five, Caterpillar, fourth. Two, four, three, five. That result unofficial for the first. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's first race, the unofficial winner, number two, What's Up, Bro? Owned by Knollwood Stables of John Gregorio, trained by Larry Ravelli, the jockey Jareth Loveberry. What's Up, Bro? Three-year-old gelded son of Dial Den out of Lady on Holiday by Harlan's Holiday, the winner bred in New York by Barry Ostriger. Six furlongs over the fast main track, one minute, 12.37 seconds. First race, results official, 2-4-3-5, the official results. Keeneland's second race upcoming, double in pick three wagering at start of the early pick four. The main track is fast. The turf is good today. Rail at 20, or rather at 10 feet on the uh, turf course, 10 feet for the rail on the turf today. Second race, scratch the six, Gloriette. Scratch the seven, Backwoods Barbie. Also scratch the 11, Tappin' Into Genius. And scratch number 13, City Shack. Again, scratch the six, Gloriette. Scratch the seven, Backwoods Barbie. Scratch 11, Tappan into Genius, and Scratch 13, City Shack. No changes in race three. Fourth race, Scratch the seven, Segoy. That's the fourth race, Scratch the seven, Segoy. Race five, take out the also eligibles, 13 through 16. 
they did not draw into the race. Again, that's race five. Take out the also eligibles. They did not draw in 13 through 16.
Race number two, two-year-old fillies, maiden $150,000 claiming event. Six furlongs the distance, doubles roll, as do pick three. So new pick three, new double available here, as well as the first of two pick fours. Early pick four begins race two at Keeneland. In good taste, the number four horse is the nine to five favorite for Brad Cox and Barry and Joni Butso, a filly by Tapature that they bred, shows up here in this maiden claiming race, high level maiden claiming race. And this is not an easy race to read with the inexperience that fills this race and some of the key scratches. But when you've got a homebred, and as you've mentioned before, Kate, and a homebred that you've invested the stud fee and things of that nature into, you know what you've got and you don't have to be over the top knowing where your investment's at. And the stud fee for this horse, only $7,500, the stallion that this filly's buy. So running for this kind of a claiming price with a $69,000 purse, uh, is not something that uh, would be a negative looking at in good taste, especially coming out of the Br Brad Cox barn. No, I mean, the, with the stud fee of $7,500 on Tapature, which kind of belies the fact that uh, he's a very effective sire with young horses and uh, with two-year-olds, first-time starters, too, 14%. Um, you can run for $150,000. That's a lot of money to pay for a horse if somebody is going to reach in and claim her. But the big thing here is that Cox is very adept at picking the horses to run in these maiden claimers for their debut. 28% success rate for a positive return on investment. With first-time starters in general, he's, he's very good. But um, And maiden claiming in general, 30%. I, I think he knows when they need a little class relief and when they need to run in that little easier spot. That said, he's had... Uh, a few in this similar situation that have gone up very short prices, looked very well met, that didn't come up with the victory. So um, you kind of tread lightly with that in mind, especially given that it's a first-time starter. Her workout pattern has been very solid. She's been based with his string at Horseshoe Indianapolis. She breezed out of the gate very well. Um, she makes a lot of sense here. Before that, she was at Turfway Park. So um, bred to be an early developer, and without very many that have much form to go off of, she is... The logical favorite here, although I hate to take a short price, she's the one that makes a lot of sense. The uh, other horse, though, that uh, makes a lot of sense is toward the inside. I know uh, I liked the, both the three and the nine. Scott, you liked the two and the nine. Windy Walk, in particular, with a good pedigree to be an early developer. Yeah, she's a filly by Munnings, uh, bred by Richard Perkins. He owns her as well, so a breeder-owner situation in this uh, young race as well. And Chris Davis... Uh, the Phillies conditioner, the trainer of this filly, said that she's not been outworked at any point in her works in the morning. She might need a race. He did admit that. But you've got Luis Saez, who's taken the call on this first-time starter at 13-1. to 1. Uh, I'll take my shot with her in that uh, second spot, debuting for Maiden 150, 150,000, especially with Chris Davis saying that nobody's outworked her in her morning works when she's had company. And then uh, we both look to the nine controlled temper as a uh, filly that um, with experience could benefit. She's coming out of maiden special weight races. And we've seen in these maiden races here at Churchill more six and a half furlongs, seven furlongs, that experience does count for something in terms of fitness and, and just general expertise experience versus those first time starters. Controlled temper showed some speed in her debut at Ellis Park and was a good second in maiden special weight. Then traveled to Churchill Downs and had a real rough trip. I'm not sure we can hold that performance against her. She gets a little class relief today, but not a huge jump down from maiden special weight to maiden claimers when you're talking 150,000. I think she could show speed again. Tyler Gaffleone takes the call. Dallas Stewart winning at 40% here. So I don't think you can throw her out of the equation. And you've got the three horses, your third selection. She spun the debuter for Steve Asmus and then the Heilig Broats with Keith James Asmus and set to ride. You know, this is more of a trainer angle. Um, Steve is effective with his maiden claimers, 22%. And when they debut in maiden claiming races, 24%. Um, also, I think she's by a sire, Mohamed, who can throw a, a quick quick learner, quick developer. Workout pattern has been pretty steady in the morning and with some fast works in her most recent. I do like the fact that she gets to work here at Keeneland. So she's walking out of her own stall to run versus some of the others that are shipping in from other locations. I also see that she's had a couple of works out of the gate to prep her for this 
debut performance, and I, I like to see that. Um, shows that recency, it's going to be fresh in her mind. The workout was pretty sharp here at Keeneland, uh, one of the fastest of the morning out of the starting gate uh, for half a mile, so she may hit the ground running. Race number two, two-year-old Phillies going three-quarters of a mile. Once again, first leg of the early pick four, 50-cent minimum wager here at Keeneland.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's second race. Maiden's two-year-old fillies claiming price of $150,000, six furlongs over the fast main track. Scratch the six, Gloriette. Also scratch number seven, Backwoods Barbie. Scratch the 11, Tappan into Genius. And scratch number 13, City Shack. Double and pick three wagering start of the early pick four. Main track is fast. Turf is good. Post time at six minutes. Looking ahead to Keeneland's fourth race, a late jockey change. Fourth race, number four, Gita's Lad, the jockey Orlando Mojica. Race four, number four, Gita's Lad, the jockey will be Orlando Mojica. There's the 12-horse Ocean Bird warming up, currently 9-2, to two, getting set for her debut. Homebred for the Mary Lou Whitney Stables, bred also by Gainesway Thoroughbreds, getting set for her first career start for trainer Norm Cassie. She impressed me in the paddock as being very, very fit. You could see great muscle tone. Um, she's just a really good-looking filly. And by a sire, Birdsong, who is 17% uh, with his two-year-old and first-time starters, 15% success rate. So um, certainly the pedigree is there for her to be an early bloomer. A lot of works here at Keeneland as well as Saratoga, and then before that, Churchill Downs to get her ready. So I, I think she has reason to be fit, but she looks it on the track and maybe was getting a little bit overlooked in the wagering, although she's getting some play now at 4-1. to one. Controlled temper, the number nine horse. She's a filly that was breathing fire down on the track currently sitting at three to one. The number two horse is another one that I want to point towards. That's Windy Walk for Chris Davis. She is a big barrel chested filly. She is just built big. That, there's no getting around it. I, just her chest stands out to me and the way that uh, she's been turned out by Chris Davis. Just a, a beautiful Munnings filly for Richard Perkins. That can be a curse and a blessing, right? Uh, on the one hand, you want to see those big, strong, strapping fillies, but on the other hand, it can be a little bit tougher to get them ready first time out. Um, you alluded to that in your words with Chris Davis, but um, you can't knock anything about her appearance-wise. Race number two, three minutes to post.
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's second race, start of the early pick four. Moving at the line, race two. She spun, moves in. Adeliki moves into the line. In good taste, going into the gate. Ocean Bird, the last to load. Goes in, they're at the post. They're off. There goes Corkage Fee out for the lead. Adeliki has early speed as well. Ma Ray's girl is there. Ocean Bird up close to the pace as well. Center of the track moving up third. Now to second to challenge for the lead. Ocean Bird to the outside. Adeliki is to her inside. Ma Ray's girl goes third. Two lengths off the front pair. Corkage Fee is in fourth. Controlled temper drops back into fifth. Caught wide to the far turn. In good taste. Moves by her. Now takes over fifth. She spun sixth against the rail. Seven lengths off the lead. Controlled temper is now back in the seventh position around the far turn turn impeccable timing and Wendy Walk is last 22.68 seconds the time for the opening quarter a delicate to the inside ocean bird to the outside the battle for the lead with just over a quarter mile to go Ma Ray's girl moves up to join them Corkage Fee has to swing wide in good taste and she spawned her down to the inside both looking for the same piece of real estate in good taste is still fourth as they move by the eighth pole Ma Ray's girl has the lead Ma Ray's girl, uh, girl clear by three lengths into the final furlong from a delicate in in good taste, switching lanes to the outside. She goes from third, now takes second, four lengths behind. Ma Ray's girl, Ma Ray's girl to win it. In good taste, was up in time for second. Controlled temper rallied from the back of the pack for third. Adeliki was fourth. Ma Ray's girl swinging off the turn and about the four path and carries that momentum that she built up on the turn to roll right on to victory here at odds of nine to one on debut for trainer Doug O'Neill. Fast fractions kind of set it up for those late kickers and boy did Ma Ray's girl kick in a big way for Rafael Bejarano and Doug O'Neill. So too did the four in good taste who didn't have the best of starts uh, but did rally for the place and hanging on after showing the way through some pretty fast fractions was the 10.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's second race, number five, Ma Ray's Girl, was first. Number four, In Good Taste, was second. Number nine, Controlled Temper, third. And number 10, Adeliki, was fourth. Five, four, nine, ten, unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's second race, the unofficial winner, number five, Ma Ray's Girl, owned by Seymour Juki and Jack Stable, LLC, of Dr. Gary Poland, trained by Doug O'Neill, the jockey Rafael Bejarano. Ma Ray's Girl, a two-year-old filly by Mendelssohn out of Isla by Unbridled Song, bred in Kentucky by Crosshaven Bloodstock. Six furlongs over the fast main track, one minute, 12.7 seconds, and the results are official, five, four, nine, ten. the official results. Keeneland's third race upcoming, double and pick three wagering featured here. The main track is fast, the turf listed good, the rail at 10 feet on the turf course today. Third race has no changes to report. Looking ahead, the fourth race, scratch the seven, Segoy. Fourth race, scratch the seven, Segoy. And a reminder, the jockey for the four, Gita's Lad, Orlando Mojica. That's the fourth race, number four, Gita's Lad, Orlando Mojica, the jockey. Race five, take out the also eligibles. 13 through 16, they did not draw into the race.
Race number three is a starter allowance race, a starter 50 for Phillies and Bears, three and up, which have started for that $50,000 tag or less, and or and which rather have never won a race other than as we get set for them to go six and a half furlongs on the fast main track. The number five horse is two to one, Girl Afraid for Beast Mode Racing in America's Pastime Racing. Robert Falcone Jr. brings this filly in off of a run at Saratoga where she ran well against a similar company. They took her for 40, claimed her for 40 back in July and responded with that uh, good effort. She was favored on that day and moving up in class and favored once again today as uh, Robert Falcone Jr. looks for another win in less than a week here at Keeneland. She's one of several who I think will be on the early lead. Unlike the first couple of races, I really think this is going to be a heated pace early. And at six and a half furlongs, could be a real test to carry the speed, the distance. As a result, I went to a horse who I thought could sit close but didn't have to be on the lead and probably wouldn't be. That's the six-story hour. She is three to one right now and coming off a third-place finish but was claimed out of the race for $50,000 by Robbie Medina. Um, brings her back now for her third start off of a layoff, and I really think she's the main beneficiary with a good chance to all that speed up front because when she has a target, she's really game on. She came up with a win at Churchill going seven furlongs in similar fashion, sitting just off a pretty solid pace. She likes those extended sprints versus the true five and a half furlong, three quarters of a mile. I think that's just a little short of ideal for her. And you get uh, Tyler Gaffleone with the call. I think story hour is very live in here, uh, but I also think that a horse like the three home port who also can sit that stalking trip is real interesting at 10 to 1. Um, Homeport comes in off a second place finish in Starter Allowance Company over at Churchill. At this same six and a half furlong distance, she was a little outkicked at the end, but maybe that was in part because of the layoff. She might be able to finish more strongly today. Luann Machado has certainly picked up some momentum and has uh, shown some really good, strong finishes. So I think he'll be um, right there on the spot with the three Homeport who I like right now at 10 to 1. I do too. I'm shocked that she's that kind of a price. She was 4 to 1 and ran to her odds in her last race over at Churchill in a starter 50. And uh, the 6.5, a, a big plus, I think, drawn further to the inside versus what she was last time out's another plus, And she can sit a little closer if she finds herself in that position. She just went down to 8 to 1. So in the span of talking, or for, talking about her for about a minute, she's come down from 10 to 1 to 8 to 1. That's the 3 home port. Then the number 7 horse... Uh, to the outside, condiment girl for Robertino Diodoro, another one who's coming out of that same race that Homeport uh, is at Churchill Downs. She was the favorite that day, had the lead, couldn't hold on. Set the contested pace, and that is my concern here, that it's going to be, again, a contested pace and that it's going to be difficult for her to hang on, at least for the win. But I wouldn't be at all shocked to see her hanging around for at least a part of it, as she did last time, as she did the time before as well, after leading the way, going six furlongs. In three of her last four starts, she's been right on the front engine and has at least been involved at the end and I think if if maybe the speed doesn't show up to the inside the way I think it will then she's definitely a horse to contend with at eight to one um, but otherwise use underneath I really think she's a good trifecta play because she's very very competitive at this level and she does have that early speed which is always great if uh, if the other speeds don't show up Race number three starts another double and pick three exact to trifecta superfecta wagering available for this third event Less than 15 minutes to post to Keeneland.
Fourth, looking ahead to Keeneland's seventh race, a late jockey change in race seven. On number seven, El Ahijado, the jockey, Jamie Torres. Keeneland's seventh race, number seven, El Ahijado, make the jockey, Jamie Torres. The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's third race. Starter allowance, fillies and mares, age three, adopt six and a half furlongs over the fast main track. Doubled in pick three wagering featured here. No changes in this third event. Main track is fast. The turf is good. The rail at 10 feet on the turf course today. Post time is just five minutes. There's the number one horse in the Chris Duggan silks, the green and black with D 
on the center for Robertino Diodoro, Diodoro, mischievous gal who is currently five to one. They claim this horse off of Maggie Moss and Tom Amos, and we've seen how good Amos and Moss have been uh, this week, especially at Keeneland Racecourse and through the years. So uh, Diodoro, he's a very good claiming trainer, but this is a tough operation to move a horse up off of. Agreed, and that was originally why I wasn't uh, gravitating toward her as far as her running lines were concerned on paper. But after looking at her, of the two Robertina Diodoro horses, and he also has the seven condiment girl, I thought Mischievous Scale looked just a little bit brighter, a little bit more now. Um, just a, a very pretty filly and uh, had just a healthy demeanor about her. It was really eager, um, bright expression. You can see it in the warm-up as well. Uh, just a, a very fit, happy, healthy-looking filly. So um, she kind of moved up in my estimation. And, you know, if uh, you follow the stats, 21% success rate for Robertino Diodoro off the claim. Um, and combining with... Ricardo Santana Jr., a very strong trainer jockey angle. Let's go to the six-horse story hour. Hour, two to one, the gray filly for Robbie Medina and Ruthie's Ride LLC. Another off-the-claim situation in this race, taken for 50, protected today. Robbie Medina doesn't claim that many horses, so it's hard to gauge um, where he's at as far as strike rate is concerned. But I like what I'm seeing from her. She's big. She's probably the biggest filly in the field, and she looks like she could cover a lot of ground. I think the six and a half furlongs definitely suits, and she is a very happy, very feisty horse. Um, she's been showing sass in the paddock as well as out in the warm-up. Um, she's kind of fun to watch, too, with that streaming tail. It looks like she rides out of a fairy tale. The eight horse style, another one sent postward this afternoon by Joel Campbell, uh, the conditioner who hails from the Chicagoland area. 12 to 1 on the board right now with James Graham in the saddle. This really last seen in the Chicagoland area at Hawthorne back in August. Well, much like uh, the horse in the last race, she makes a very, very nice appearance. She's very well turned out. And she's been knocking on the door at this level at Hawthorne going shorter. Uh, maybe the six and a half furlongs helps her. and. Certainly, I think there's going to be a heated pace, so it could set up nicely for her to get a piece. The three home port prices come down steadily. Ten to one about ten minutes ago. Now six to one. Myler Ryder, her, the Phillies trainer, told me that he wants her to be more forward than she was last time out. So we'll see if that comes into play today. I, I'm not sure if that's such a good thing to be more forward in here because I think there's a lot of speed. Just to her inside, tell me when. Um, can show speed. I think Condiment Girl is very fast, and Girl Afraid can also be forwardly placed. So to me, this has uh, got all the makings of a race that'll set up for somebody from off the pace. But that's in part why I like Homeport, because even if she is more forward, she probably isn't going to be on the lead. And she's been closing nicely. Just about post time. The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's third race. Moving into line for the third race. Condiment Girl moves into line. The last two getting set to load. Stormy Empire comes forward. Style, the last one. Goes in, they're at the post. And they're off. 
Story Hour broke alertly. Condiment Girl is right there. Girl Afraid is up close in the opening strides as well. These three come forward in the opening strides. Mischievous Gal is going to move up down toward the inside, now taking fourth by just a neck. Tell Me When, alongside her, is fifth. Home Port is in sixth and a gap of five more lengths back to Stormy Empire's seventh style is last of the eight. Still a three-way shuffle for the lead. Girl Afraid against the rail. Story Hour between horses. Condiment Girl far outside the top three. Seven Separated by a neck to the far turn, Mischievous Gal fourth behind that trio. Tell Me When is fifth up on her outside. 22.48 seconds the time for the opening quarter. And then home port and a gap of eight more lengths back to style next to last. Stormy Empire trails around the far turn. Condiment Girl, Story Hour, Mischievous Gal coming off the rail to join them. Girl Afraid still there to the inside. Tell Me When is fifth. Has to go to the center of the track. Four lengths from the lead. Story Hour, Mischievous Gal running by. Mischievous Mischievous Gal for the lead. Eighth of a mile to go. Condiment Girl goes to second. Story Hour is now in third. Then Tell Me When is fourth. Mischievous Gal is in front for Ricardo Santana Jr. Mischievous Gal is 16th to go. Has the lead by three. Back to Story Hour. Then Condiment Girl and Style. Mischievous Gal wins it. Three quarters of a length. Story Hour home second. Then Style rallied up for third. That's two wins in a row for the starter of Practical Joke. Mischievous Gal and Robertino Diodoro once again winning off the claim, this time for his owner, Chris Duggan. She looked good in the paddock and post parade, even better on the racetrack as she got a good setup with several horses battling for the early lead as it looked like it might be the case on paper. Takes advantage and kicks home here at the six and a half furlongs. A nice uh, hanging in there type effort for the six story hour and then the eight style closed well at a decent price to be third photo for show hold all tickets Unofficial results of Keeneland's third race. Number one, Mischievous Gal was first. Six, Story Hour was second. Number eight, Style was third. And number seven, Condiment Girl was fourth. One, six, eight, seven, unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's third race, number one, Mischievous Gal, the unofficial winner, owned by Chris Duggan, trained by Robertino Diodoro. Ricardo Santana Jr. is 
the winning jockey. Mischievous Gal, a three-year-old filly by Practical Joke, out of Enough by Arch, bred in Kentucky by Lynch Bodge. Limited six and a half furlongs, one minute, 18.82 seconds over the fast main track. Third race results official, 1687, the official results. Keeneland's fourth race upcoming, double and pick three wagering offered here. Start of the pick six, no carryover. Main track is listed fast. The turf is good. The rail at 10 feet on the turf course. Fourth race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. In this fourth event, scratch the seven, Segoy. Again, scratch number seven, Segoy. Jockey for the four, Gita's Lad, Orlando Mojica. Four, Gita's Lad, the jockey, Orlando Mojica. Race five, take out the also eligibles, 13 through 16. They did not draw into the race. Race five, take out the also eligibles. They did not draw in, 13 through 16. The sixth race, scratch number six, Derby Date, and scratch the nine, Call Me Midnight. That's in the sixth race. Scratch number six, Derby Date, and scratch number nine, Call Me Midnight. The featured seventh race, take out the also eligibles 13 through 16. They did not draw into the race. Jockey for the seven, El Ajijado, Jamie Torres. Number seven, El Ajijado, Jamie Torres, the jockey. Eighth race, scratch the 12, fast fall. That's in the eighth race, scratch number 12, fast fall. Jockey for the nine, Bright Spark, will be James Graham. Number nine, Bright Spark, the jockey, James Graham. Ninth and final race, scratch the eight, she's a native. Scratch number 13, Destiny Star. Also scratch number 15, Tipsy Runner, and the 16, Street View. That's the ninth and final race, scratch number eight, she's a native. Scratch number 13, Destiny Star. Also scratch the 15 Tipsy Runner and the 16 Street View. Please note number 14 draws into the race. 14 Luminous Ruler will run.
Race number four, less than 19 minutes to post. $32,000 claiming event. Open claiming event at a mile on the 16th. First wire finish. Short stretch here in race number four. And Heartbreaker is five to two. Now, this is a key horse in many ways. He's the favorite right now, likely favorite come post time as he stretches back out to a two-turn two race after going seven and a half furlongs at Churchill Downs. He also drops in class. There's a lot of reasons, in my opinion, to like this gelding. And the price is is square on this favorite three to one is a very good price on the number eight horse heartbreaker now also we need to pay attention to the way that this horse performs and if he runs big we can utilize that later in the card because in race number six there's a horse named shooter shoot who looks like he's going to be awfully tough and he comes out of the common race with shooter shoot that ended up finishing third in that most recent seven and a half furlong race that heartbreaker comes out of so Romans, I like the move here. Drop in for 32, back to two turns. He's in the right spot here today to carry his speed around the two turns into the short stretch here at Keeneland at a mile and a 16th. I, I agree with you. He's very live in here and comes out of a very tough race um, with the ability to rebound big time, giving more distance to work with. I was a little concerned, although the pace got a little bit lighter with the scratch of the seven there are still a couple horses who could put a little pressure on the eight heartbreaker the four Gita's lad and also the nine expensive cut are capable of showing speed i don't think they're as fast naturally as heartbreaker is and given that he's coming out of a sprint race he could be even faster so i think the most likely to lead is heartbreaker but i'm wondering if he gets a little bit of pressure early if it doesn't make him vulnerable for that reason i went to the three bird king as my top choice he's four to one currently and the six-year-old is still going strong. This is a product of the Mary Lou Whitney uh, breeding program by Tisnow out of Bird Legacy, who's a mine shaft mare. There's certainly a stamina influence there. But Bird King was able to stock the pace in a $25,000 condition claimer over at Parks and won as the favorite. He's very consistent. He has won previously at Keeneland. And I think he could get a very, very good setup with Francisco Arietta um, riding so well and able to be a bit aggrand especially i thought bird king was maybe the main threat to the eight heartbreaker who i did expect to be favored here but um there were a few others like the two soul coaxing who i had a big question mark next to soul coaxing is also taking a pretty big class drop coming off the layoff has been away since august but on his best day is capable of a really big run. And he's tactical. He can be close to the pace. He can sit a little bit farther off of it. Um, he's been very consistent throughout his career, first, second, or third in 11 of 24 starts lifetime. And with the class relief here um, off the freshening, I thought could be a real factor. I, as do I. He's my second choice, soul coaxing. He comes out of those races at Hawthorne. Um, one of the things about him is going the mile of 16th. What, what is Tyler Gaffleone going to be able to do? Because it's a fairly long stretch at Hawthorne. His best races as of late, at least his win, came at Fairgrounds, which seems as though it's got the longest stretch, one of the longest stretches in, in racing, just goes on forever. So what does Tyler Gaffleone have to do? Will he be a little bit more aggressive? And that might work into his favor just to get him forward a little bit. And he's going to have to move uh, around that turn and make that move. The number six horse, uh, is my third choice for Chris Hartman. He's got this seven to two second choice right now in the wagering coming out of a mile and eighth races. Um, he was part of the pace that day, kind of a quick pace in especially the one two starts ago. But I think it, at a mile and a 16th, just let him loose, maybe Corrales and not having to go that distance of a mile and an eighth will be a plus for him. That's why I put him into that third slot in race number four. 15 minutes to post. It's race four on the card. This one begins the pick six for the final six races of the afternoon here at Keelan.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's fourth race. Claiming race, $32,000 the claiming price, three-year-olds and up, a mile and a sixteenth over the fast main track. Race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. Scratch the seven, Segoy. Number seven, Segoy is scratched. Jockey for the four, Gita's Lad, Orlando Mojica. Four, Gita's Lad, the jockey, Orlando Mojica. Double and pick three, wagering start of the pick six. No carryover, main track fast, turf good, rail at 10 feet on the turf course. Post time in seven minutes. Heartbreaker still the favorite at five to two, holding up at a good price in the favorites role. And as the money is being spread out, so pretty evenly in this race, allowing for five to two, which would mean at least a seven dollar winner on Heartbreaker if he wins, as the majority expects. And Dale Roman's telling me that back to two turns. That's he's been looking at this race for a while, and here he is. Yeah, I think I know how he got his name because when you look at him, he is a heartbreaker. He is beautiful, uh, just a really good looking individual um, who is is well balanced he's big but he looks very agile on his feet and certainly you can see from his confirmation why he probably likes the distance of ground uh, it's a very high cruising speed i think he's the speed of the speed in this race and he looks exceptional i thought the five looked exceptional as well be a leaf for eduardo rodriguez and ricardo rodriguez the illinois bred just a big powerful son of lee coming into this race off of a couple of wins uh, in Illinois at Hawthorne and then Fairmount Park, but he's just so well defined and he's five to one on the board right now. And he's a straightforward, seemingly type of horse. Lays back, makes that run, and knows what his job is. He tries hard every time he goes out there. It's a question of whether or not he's competitive with some of these other horses, as I think this is one of his test, toughest tests to date. But you can't fault how he's looked in the warm up, and he's coming off two straight victories at two very different racetracks. Um, and he has a touch of class himself, having won an Illinois restricted competition uh, in a stakes race. So um, I can make a case for him. He should get a good setup as far as the pace is concerned. Let's go to the nine horse, seven to one expensive cut. The son of Caraconti, he, he's better on dirt. There's no way of getting around it, uh, even though he's by that turf stallion or when he was a runner, Caraconti, known for his successes on turf, obviously. But four wins on a fast main track and looking to uh, add to that tally here today is he'll take a drop down in class coming in from Delaware and Parks and Monmouth Park. He's actually done a bit more as far as winning is concerned than most of his rivals in here. And he's one I wanted to talk about because I thought he looked so fresh and so sharp. Um, he's had his head bowed and has been just rearing to get out onto the racetrack, but very focused as well, not getting warm, just really feeling good and seemingly enjoying this uh, cooler wind as it blows. 
He's coming out of tough company at Delaware um, in his most recent start, where he kind of faltered after pressing, trying to press the pace. And I don't know if he's a need-the-lead type, although he did seem to be able to win on a sloppy track with kind of a stalking style when he was toward the outside of the field. So I'm hoping that he doesn't have to tangle with the speed inside of him unnecessarily. I think he could be on a tough end of that if he tries, but based on how he looks, he's very sharp. Less than three minutes to post for race number four, first leg of today's pick six at Keeneland. The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's fourth race, start of the pick six. Moving into line for Keeneland's fourth race. Bird King comes forward along with Heartbreaker. They both move into line. Gita's Lad moves in. Expensive cut, the last to load. First wire, they're at the post. And they're off. There goes Heartbreaker from the outside. Heartbreaker right out for the early lead. Clears the inside traffic well before the entry to the first turn. Heartbreaker right to the front. Expensive cut will go second. Gita's Lad is in third. Soul Coaxing is fourth. Saving ground against the rail. Moves up third. Second now to take the lead around the first turn. Expensive cut's going to be wide back in that third position. Back up front, though, it is Heartbreaker from the outside. Soul Coaxing to the inside. Heartbreaker outward from the rail. Leads it now by a neck. Then a gap of two lengths. Expensive cut third by just a head. Gita's Lad is in fourth position. He's got this fifth toward the outside. Bird King sixth against the rail. Then a gap of seven more lengths back to the two trailers. Bia Lee and What a Country. The opening quarter, 23.82 seconds. Up the back stretch they go. Heartbreaker to the outside has a head in front. Soul Coaxing is second. Five more lengths. Expensive Cut is third by one length as they head for the far turn. He's got this. Changing lanes down to the inside. Is in the fourth position now. Followed by Bird King, Gita's Lad, What a Country, and Bia Lee, who's 
his last 47.78 seconds the time for the first half mile. Heartbreaker, the leader, as they move midway on the far turn and leads it now by a length and a half by two lengths as they come for the quarter pull. He's got this, is moving up from between horses, had to change lanes, comes toward the outside. Expensive cut is moving with that one. They're past the quarter pull, top of the short stretch. And Soul Coaxing now drops back into fourth. They turn for home. He's got this. Is right alongside of Heartbreaker. They go at it for the lead. Gap of three more lengths back to Expensive Cut. Now Heartbreaker's fighting on to the inside. He's got this. Is right there with him. Heartbreaker. He's got this. He's got this. And Heartbreaker. He's got this. Gerardo Corrales. He's got this. Wins at three quarters of a length. Heartbreaker second. Expensive Cut was across the wire in third. Close for fourth. Bird King or what a country. Well, Heartbreaker ran his race. He got to the lead and he turns for a home with some company to his outside. And to his credit, he digs back in, but he's got this, did in fact, as he was able to settle off the pace and outlast the favorite down to the wire. Corrales made a, a very aggressive move to, to take on the pace setter and maybe running tandem with the two soul coaxing costs the eight Heartbreaker a little bit at the end but he certainly had soft enough fractions and did run his race digging in there gamely, proving toughest of all. He's got this. Unofficial results of Keeneland's fourth race. Number six, he's got this, was first. Number eight, Heartbreaker was second. Number nine, Expensive Cut third. And number three, Bird King fourth. Six, eight, nine, three, unofficial. Moving into the winner's circle for Keeneland's fourth race, the unofficial winner, number six, he's got this, owned by J.D. Thoroughbreds, LLC of Jackie Slauson, owned by Joey Keith Davis and Larry Romero, the trainer, Chris Hartman, the jockey, Gerardo Corrales. He's got this, a four-year-old gelded son of Tapature, out of Golden Delicious by Harlan's Holiday, the winner bred in Kentucky by Gil Masters. 
Mile and a 16th over the fast main track, 1 minute 46.22 seconds. Results of the fourth race, official 6893, the official results. Keeneland's fifth race upcoming, double and pick three, wagering start of the late pick five, and also start of the Keeneland turf pick three, made up of races five, seven, and nine. A reminder, take out the also eligibles 13 through 16. They did not draw into the race. The turf is listed good, the rail at 10 feet. Looking ahead to the sixth race, scratch number six, Derby Date, and scratch number nine, Call Me Midnight. That's in the sixth race, scratch number six, derby date, and scratch number nine, call me midnight. Featured seventh race, take out the also eligibles, 13 through 16. They did not draw into the race. Jockey for the seven, El Ahijado, will be Jamie Torres. Seven, El Ahijado, Jamie Torres to ride. Eighth race, scratch 12, fast fall. That's the eighth race, scratch number 12, fast fall. The jockey for the nine, Bright Spark, James Graham. Number nine, Bright Spark, the jockey, James Graham. Ninth and final race, scratch number eight, She's a Native. Scratch number 13, Destiny Star. Also scratch the 15, Tipsy Runner, and the 16, Street View. That's the ninth and final race. Scratch number eight, She's a Native. Scratch number 13, Destiny Star. Also scratch the 15 Tipsy Runner and the 16 Street View. A reminder, number 14 draws in. 14 Luminous Ruler draws into the race.
Race number five, start of the $3 Keeneland Turf Pick 3. Races five, seven, and nine. We go odds as far as the race numbers for that $3 Keeneland Turf Pick 3 sequence. This one also begins the late pick five. Make up the number two horses, 14 to one for Steve Asmussen. Ran well on debut at Ellis in the mud. Classic Empire Philly that's going to shorten up in distance and run on turf here today. I think the distance is the upside for this Philly as much as anything, shortening up to five and a half furlongs with Santana in the saddle as uh, Ricardo Santana Jr. looks for his second win on the card today. I'll take my shot with Makeup, the number two horse, the daughter of the champion, two-year-old Classic Empire. The second choice on the board right now is the five into stars at seven to two. This is a Philly who is a half-sister to Mo Bills who... Won two in a row, including one here at Keeneland and Into Stars. Has experience on both dirt and turf, and both of them good races for trainer Brad Cox, who's in that heated battle for leading trainer here with Todd Pletcher currently. Uh, Into Stars finished third on the turf and showed some speed and kind of ran in spots. I thought it was a good effort for her first try on the grass and only her second start lifetime, but I did think it was a race that she could build upon. She was the beaten favorite in that one. I don't think she has to be on the lead. I think she can actually settle. And in this race, I think there are others who will be a little bit faster early. That could be perfect for her. Um, she's sitting on a nice race, I think. Dr. Ray D, with a period at the end, is the number six horse at 11 to one for Mike Maker, Constitution Philly. She's run three times. She's run in three different uh, racetracks, Belmont, Saratoga, Kentucky Downs, even runs in all of them as she'll shorten up to the shortest distance that she'll be asked to go thus far in her career. I could see the experience coming into play. Corrales is in the saddle. Um, Gerardo Corrales winning at a 13% clip when teaming up with Mike Maker over the last few months. Um, I'm going to take a shot with Mike Maker as much as anything, keeping her in a five and a half furlong sprint. Uh, I could have easily seen them stretching her back out with just that one stretch out run in her career, but they're going to try a new distance, third different distance in that four, fourth different distance, excuse me, in the span of four races for Dr. Ray D. We're both going to give a look to the seven, Beautiful Mischief. Uh, my second choice, your third choice, uh, Beautiful Mischief, is by Into Mischief. She was a $250,000 uh, two year old purchase earlier and she's a full sister to a graded stakes winner on dirt engage but she's out of a mare nefertiti who is stakes placed on turf and certainly into mischiefs can do just about anything draw a line through her debut i think she maybe just didn't care for the dirt but i could see her improving dramatically here second time out for eddie keneally who's Maidens do improve race to race, and uh, I like the fact that he goes to Louis Saez here. She's not getting much play on the board, but she has a turf look to her at Beautiful Mischief uh, at a nice price, a horse to maybe throw in. But the 11 2 Sip Sally, who is your 2-1 to one favorite, uh, Scott, is a horse that I put all the way in third because I thought there were so many others that had potential, and you knew that she was going to get bet down off of a second-place finish at Kentucky Downs. The race she comes out of has not been very productive so far, but she ran very well and certainly comes from a good barn. Brendan Walsh with Tyler Gaffleone aboard. So I, I could see her. I can't leave her out. But at the same time, there are others you can make some strong cases for, too. It's a good race. It has it all. Good pedigrees, good connections, young horses, high-priced yearling purchases, and a pretty good tote board as well with that 2-1 to one favoritism next to the eleven. For race number five, once again, first leg of the all-turf pick three, races five, seven, and nine. That's a $3 minimum wager. Also begins the 50-cent late pick five here at Keeneland.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's fifth race, the Green Lantern, made in special weight two-year-old fillies. Five and a half furlongs over the turf, listed good, the rail at 10 feet. Take out the also eligibles, 13 through 16. They did not draw into the race. Double and pick three wagering, start of the late pick five, and also start of the Keeneland turf, pick three. Post time coming up in six minutes. Here's a filly that's been getting plenty of action throughout the ability to look at the wagering in this race and the win wagering pools, and she was four to one when they were still down in the paddock. That's the eight horse Shore War. She's now up to six to one. Rusty Arnold, the trainer of this Omaha Beach filly, he told me turf is what she wants. She's a nice filly, and she hated the deep Saratoga dirt. She didn't run a jump in that last race and only race in her career, and uh, on turf today, she's going to get a fair shake at it against a group of fillies of all different shapes and sizes here. She's well put together. She looked good in the paddock and in the warm-up. Uh, she looks fast. She's got that sprinter-type build, that physique, but um, also a really attentive expression, and uh, I liked everything I saw from her. Um, put her toward the top of the list for sure. The nine saved the mischief um, is another that caught my eye in a very different way. She looks completely different from the eight Shore War and some of the others in here. She's lankier, she's kind of lean, but she has a look of sort of a European turf type horse. And I think um, she really will benefit by getting a chance to run on the grass. Looks like her conditioner, Ian Wilkes, thought that that's where he wanted to have her first out. That race got moved to the main track draw a line through it, but she will benefit a little from having run in an actual race in the afternoon from a fitness standpoint in the way Ian's horses have run all meet long. You have to take a look at this 11 to 1 shot. And Ian tell me, he says the way that she works on dirt makes him think that she's a, a turf horse. So what do you mean by that? And he said she's just not showing turn of foot on dirt. So hopefully the move over to the turf course will uh, wake her up a bit here today. The 12 horse fantastical for Joe Sharp. This is a first time starter. Here's a filly with a turf pet degree she's by air force blue out of a giant's causeway first dam i just like the look of her um, and air force blue is very good with his young horses and on turf 11 percent winners um, of those uh, first time starters 
she was a little green when she hit the track, looking around at everything and playing and bucking, and it seemed like she was really enjoying herself. At the same time, you wonder, does that mean that she will be a little bit green when she gets out of the starting gate? But um, outside post position, maybe not ideal. Sometimes you get fanned wide off the break in these types of situations. She's got a Hall of Famer on board, and she has the pedigree to go along with some good looks. And lastly, let's go to the 10-horse Little Miss Money. Munnings Philly for Brian Litch, Declan Cannon in the saddle. She's on the other side of that pony carrying the 10 saddle cloth. The pony's very big, and she's not, but she's very correct, very well-balanced, and super sharp. She was really on her toes. I would expect her to be forwardly placed, and this family definitely solid for producing a precocious runner and a horse who's capable of handling the turf. So from Brian Lynch's barn, he's 11% with his first time start. I, I really thought Two Sip Sally was interesting here. Um, she was, uh, excuse me, uh, Little Miss Money, rather, was interesting here at a price. And she's 19 to 1. That's about what you would think she would be. Pick five, turf pick three begins race five. The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's fifth race, the Green Lantern, start of the late pick five and start of the Keeneland turf pick three. Moving into line, race five. Little Miss Money moves into line along with In Two Stars. Two Sip Sally goes into the gate. Dr. Ray D comes forward. Fantastical, the last to load. Goes in. They're at the post. They're off. Two sips. Sally broke alertly, but Beautiful Mischief is quicker on the break. Has the lead. Makeup is right there to the inside. Lyrical Pardon is away running now in third. Two sips. Sally will go fourth. Just a half length off the lead up on the far outside. Save the Mischief is running in fifth as they head for the far turn. Satona is sixth to the inside. Shore War is seventh between horses. Fantastical. A wide eighth moving on to the turn. Into Stars. Nice to the inside. Seven lengths off the leader. Little Miss Money is back in tenth. Dr. Ray D. 11 Miss Mistaptress, last of the 12, 21.97 seconds for the opening quarter. Makeup is the leader by a length around the far turn. And here comes Beautiful Mischief in second. Two Sip Sally was wide around the turn. Lyrical Pardons fourth down toward the inside. Let's see what Two Sip Sally can do now, straightening away for home on the far outside, coming after Makeup. And Beautiful Mischief in between that pair. Makeup has the lead. Beautiful Mischief second. Two Sip Sally is still third. Deep into the final furlong. Makeup is in front. Makeup by three, by three and a half. Makeup, Ricardo Santana Jr. to win it. Beautiful mischief trying to hang on for second and does so just in front of Shore War, who came up the inside third. She showed speed on debut in the mud at Ellis Park, and today she shows speed on the turf at five and a half furlongs. And I think the lure to run her here today more than anything was the five and a half furlong distance a filly that's got a lot of speed, and she carried it to the wire on the turf today at Keeneland. You know, she got that opening quarter in a very fast time, but was able to put some distance on the rest of the field. They all had to play chase throughout, and chase they did. Um, gamely, in defeat, the seven, beautiful mischief, and even the eight, sure were making up a little ground, but no match for the front-running makeup.
the unofficial results of Keeneland's fifth race. Number two, Makeup, was first. Number seven, Beautiful Mischief, second. Number eight, Shore War, was third. And the 11, Two Sip Sally, was fourth. Two, seven, eight, 11, unofficial. Results of Keeneland's fifth race, official 2 7 8 11, the official results. In the winner's circle for race five, the Green Lantern, the official winner. Number two, Makeup, owned by William and Corinne Heiligbrot, owned by Jackpot Farm of Terry Green and Whispering Oaks Farm, LLC of Carol Castile. The trainer, Steve Asmussen, two wins today for Ricardo Santana, Jr. Makeup, a two-year-old filly by Classic Empire out of Dance Queen by To Honor and Serve, bred in Kentucky by the Paul Tackett Revocable Trust. Five and a half furlongs over the turf listed good, one minute, 3.19 seconds. Early pick five today pays on five of five with a consolation four of five. In the winter circle, the Green Lantern trophy presentation to the connections of number two, Makeup. England's sixth race upcoming, double and pick three wagering, and this will also start the late pick four. Main track is fast and the turf listed good. In the sixth race, scratch number six, Derby Date, and scratch number nine, Call Me Midnight. Again, scratch the six, Derby Date, and scratch the nine, Call Me Midnight. Seventh and featured race, take out the also eligibles, 13 through 16. They did not draw into the race. Jockey for number seven, El Ajijado, Jamie Torres. Number seven, El Ajijado, Jamie Torres is the jockey. Eighth race, scratch the 12, fast fall. That's the eighth race, scratch number 12, fast fall. A reminder, the jockey for the nine, Bright Spark, James Graham.
number nine, Bright Spark, the jockey James Graham. Ninth and final race, scratch the eight, she's a native. Also scratch number 13, Destiny Star. Scratch the 15, Tipsy Runner, and scratch the 16, Street View. That's the ninth and final race, scratch number eight, she's a native. Scratch number 13, Destiny Star. Scratch the 15, Tipsy Runner, and scratch the 16, Street View. A reminder, number 14 draws into the race. 14, Luminous Ruler, will run.
Shooter Shoot is the favorite, the number four horse for Ken Ramsey and Robertino Diodoro. Robertino Diodoro, the trainer, looking for a second win today. Uh, comes out of a good race at Churchill Downs. It was a tough race. I think this is the right spot for him. He's the best horse in this race off of that third. He's got back class to lean on as well as he makes his Keeneland debut. This is the right amount of action on Shooter Shoot. He deserves to be the favorite in race number six. And also, as we talked about earlier, two races back, Heartbreaker, the horse that he beat, who ended up fourth in that common race back on the 1st of October, ran second. So that flatters Shooter Shoot a bit here in race number six. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the form holds up. Even if he doesn't win, he ran a winning race and was extremely competitive in that group. I think Shooter Shoot um, makes a lot of sense here, even though he hasn't hit the winner's circle in a long, long time. He's been running at a much higher level very consistently. Um, before kind of working his way down the claiming ladder, he actually finished second in a grade three competition in California at three quarters of a mile in the Palos Verdes. He was beaten just a neck, uh, finishing second, that is, in grade three competition. So uh, bank rolled almost $300,000. He has some back class to go to. And Robertino Diodoro, uh, if he doesn't win first off the claim, he's pretty good second off the claim. Uh, I really think he's the horse to beat here. The betters do as well at 8 to 5. I will say that um, there are some good horses in this race, and uh, that, that makes it a harder proposition, especially for a horse who hasn't visited the winner's circle in a while. Mailman Money, the two-horse, 3 to 1, second money in this wagering event right now second choice and his last two races on turf he ran into some good horses one timer stakes winner for Ravelli out to door uh, a runner that we've seen plenty of here at Keeneland it was a Wesley Ward runner and his last dirt race at Ellis going seven furlongs the same distance he goes today was he was a beaten favorite that day in a 50,000 claimer so back on dirt which I think is the biggest aspect of his form, drawn down to the inside, there's a good chance he outbreaks the horses that are next to him, and he gets a good position because I think that he's quicker than the one lucky boss and quicker than the three, the Queen's Jewels, to put himself in a good spot. It just is a matter of where shoot or shoot ends up if they both break sharp and if he's down, pinned up on the inside and always being tracked by the four shoot or shoot. I went to the three, the Queen's Jewels, who, who might be a cut below Shoot or Shoot and Mailman Money just on pure ability, but the eight-year-old is still going strong and when in the right spot can definitely get the job done. The seven furlongs is probably ideal distance for him as he's coming out of two-turn races at Horseshoe Indianapolis. He was a winner against Easier and uh, always gives good account of himself. I'll be interested to see where he sits in this race, as I think he's at his best when he has a little bit of a target. Um, although he has won on the lead, there are several other horses in this field that are really tactical. So it's hard to gauge how fast this pace is going to be early. Um, it's going to be in the hands of the jockeys to decide those decisions right at the break. But the Queen's Jewels, one for one at Keeneland. That win actually came at three quarters of a mile in Starter Allowance Company. This, on the whole, is a little bit tougher group, but certainly the eight-year-old figures. The one lucky boss, seven to one. I put this horse in my third spot based on the trainer statistics first off the claim. Armando Hernandez, who keeps his horses uh, between, well, Churchill and even... I guess most recently at FanDuel Racing and Sportsbook, that uh, venue formerly known as Fairmount Park, this horse ships in from there, so that's the base for him. But Armando, Armando Hernandez is 28% first off the claim. That is in and amongst the elite first off the claim trainers in the game. Shows up for 50 today off of that run for 20. We'll see if he can move him up. It's not an easy place for this horse to win from post one because... He's likely going to be out broke and maybe have to come in between horses or around horses and work out a trip under Corrales. And I thought the five up striker had a chance to get a piece of the pie. Up striker is very popular in the claim box. Um, it's hard to believe how often he's been claimed for actually significant sums of money, all the way from 30000 up to 50000 most recently 40000 by Mike Maker. But these are the types of horses Maker claims and wins with. He's 20% generally off the claim. And with the higher prices horses, just seems to have a way of zeroing in on what you need to do to be able to get him over the hump. Uh, Upstriker has won at the seven furlong distance. I thought last out at three quarters of a mile, it was just a little too quick and too short for him. 
he has been known to show speed at the seven for long distance, but I'm not sure he's quite as quick as he used to be. That might turn out to be a blessing in disguise here. He is 0 for 3 at Keeneland, but I think that might be a product of the distance and circumstances he was running in. So up striker, I think uh, definitely a play underneath a few of these others as part of the exotics. Four races left on the card, which means this sixth race, 50,000 claimers, will start the late pick four, 50 cent minimum wager. It's race number six, less than 13 minutes to post at Keeneland.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's sixth race, claiming race for a price of $50,000, three-year-olds and up seven furlongs over the fast main track. Scratch the six derby date, also scratch number nine, Call Me Midnight. Double and pick three wagering start of the late pick four. Main track is fast, turf is good today, post time in seven minutes. The Queen's Jewels, the number three horse, warming up at odds of five to one in the Vanberg Silks, owned by Grits of Glory Racing and Tom Vanberg, the conditioner. What did you observe with this eight-year-old veteran son of Scat Daddy? Just having seen him over the years, I think he looks as good, if not better, than he's ever looked. So um, age hasn't been against him, that's for sure. Uh, he likes this track. It seems to me that trainer Tom Vanberg has kind of pointed him specifically for an opportunity to run back at the fall meet, much as he did last year. Um, he is coming into it in just a little bit different fashion, having had some stops and starts along the way this season, but I, I think that uh, he's sitting on a nice race. The five-horse upstriker, he was defeated by T. Burns in that most recent race. There was a horse yesterday we saw show, show speed, run a good race, didn't win, but still uh, has to be respect to the competition that he's kept as of late. You know, I, I just think he's a happy horse. He looked really, really sharp, really bright, um, and is a smaller horse, which I think gives him the opportunity to adapt a little bit easier. Sometimes the bigger horses have more trouble kind of running in stops and starts, whereas upstriker's kind of scrappy and able to kind of adjust on the fly. Louis Saez will be a good fit for him, and uh, maker off the claim is so strong. If he works a little magic with this horse, he should be right there. The two horse mailman money, Chris Hartman saying they're going. They're going to send this horse from post position number two. And he told Francisco Arietta, don't give up the rail. So if he gets the lead, he, hopefully he can hug the rail and stay there and not open up any space along his inside if he finds himself out on the front end. He is a, a class horse. I think he and Shooter Shoots are just a cut above anybody else in this field as far as raw ability and talent. Just a question of as they get a little bit older, are they able to maintain that kind of form and competitive edge? But at the end of the day, Mailman Money looks really good out on the track, just strutting his stuff. Three minutes to post. Race number six started the late pick four. Good luck.
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's sixth race, start of the late pick four. Moving into line, race six. Shooter's shoot goes into the gate. Upstriker moves forward. Spite and Malice going in, and then Group 18 will be the last to load. Goes in, they're at the post. And they're off. Mailman Money right there in the opening strides, along with Up Striker, Spite, and Malice. The Queen's Jewels kicking in as well. The Queen's Jewels moves up from in between horses to challenge Mailman Money for the early lead. Up Striker joins them. Here's Group 18 now moving up in the center of the track. Goes from fourth to third to second. Tries to poke ahead in front here in this ongoing four-way battle for the lead. Lucky Bosses down toward the inside behind that front foursome. Moves up into the fifth position by just a head. Shooter Shoot is alongside of that one now in sixth position. And Spite and Malice drops out to the back. 22.96 seconds was the time for the opening quarter. Group 18 is the leader by a length to the far turn. Mailman Money second, a neck up striker third, and challenging for second, now take second by a head around the far turn. Shooter's Shoot is angling toward the center of the track. Picks up two positions, moves into third, challenges for second, tries to draw alongside the leader as they come off the far turn. Shooter's Shoot to the far outside. Lucky Boss changing lanes to try to join that one out in the center of the track. Shooter's Shoot, Lucky Boss. These two come forward. They're one two respectively moving toward the eighth pole and lucky boss keeps moving on the outside for the lead shooter's shoot is now second but still there toward the inside the queen's jewels further back center of the track trying to take third but well behind lucky boss lucky boss Gerardo Corrales scores his second win on the card. Lucky Boss wins it. Shooter shoot was second mailman money was third and the queen's jewels was fourth
Well, Shooter Shoot ran his race, and he ran the best of that second quarter, looping the field after after the pace was set. He was run out in the first outrun in the first part of the race. He goes wide, but even wider still. Lucky Boss. And it's Armando Hernandez once again winning first off the claim. You know, I think Tyler Gaffleon's hand was forced to move when he did, which was maybe a little bit earlier and a longer sustained bid than Lucky Boss, who got to kind of sit back, wait, and then unleash that furious stretch drive. Very nice claim, though, indeed. And two straight victories for Lucky Boss, second winner of the day for Gerardo Corrales. The unofficial results of Keeneland's sixth race. Number one, Lucky Boss was first. Number four, Shooter's Shoot was second. Number two, Mailman Money third. And number three, the Queen's Jewels fourth. One, four, two, three, unofficial. Into the winner's circle for Keeneland's sixth race, the unofficial winner, number one, Lucky Boss, owned by Hernandez Racing Stable, LLC, of Ada Hernandez, trained by Armando Hernandez. Two wins today for jockey Gerardo Corrales. Lucky Boss, four-year-old gelded son of Street Boss, out of Lucky Striker by Van Nisselroy. Winner bred in Kentucky by D'Souza Stable, LLC. Seven furlongs over the fast main track, one minute, 25.24 seconds. Results of Keeneland sixth race official one four two three the official results. Keeneland seventh and featured race upcoming. The turf listed good, the rail at ten feet. Double and pick three wagering. This will start the last of the day's rolling pick threes. Take out the also eligibles 13 through 16. They did not draw into the race. The jockey for the seven, El Ajijado, Jamie Torres. Seven, El Ajijado, Jamie Torres to ride. Eighth race, scratch the 12, fast fall. That's the eighth race, scratch the 12, fast fall. Jockey for number nine, Bright Spark, James Graham. That's the eighth race, number nine, Bright Spark, jockey James Graham. Ninth and final event, scratch number eight, She's a Native. Also scratch number 13, Destiny Star. Scratch the 15, Tipsy Runner, and scratch the 16, Street View. That's the ninth and final race, scratch number eight, She's a Native. Also scratch number 13, Destiny Star. Scratch number 15, Tipsy Runner, and scratch number 16, Street View.
A reminder, number 14 draws into the race. 14, Luminous Ruler, draws into the event.
Featured race of the afternoon, race number seven. It's a first level allowance condition, $110,000 purse for three and up. Going to mile 16th on the good listed turf course, rail set at 10 feet today here at Keeneland on the grass. There's the number six horse. That is Sir London for Ammo Racing and Guitar Racing, a colt by Malibu Moon, who in the early part of his career was a very flashy young horse at Del Mar and even at Los Alamitos when he broke his maiden by 10 lengths. Uh, he ran in the Bob Lewis, couldn't keep up with that uh, top end of that three-year-old crop in 2022, and his last few races have been okay on the dirt at Los Al and Del Mar. He's a half-brother to three turf winners, and his half-sister was stakes place right here at Keeneland and trained by Graham Motion now, formerly Simon Callahan on the West Coast, moving over to grass on this good-looking dark bay or brown colt by Malibu Moon is the angle I'm going to lean on. And Graham Motion on grass for the first time. Good numbers there. Good first out of his barn stats. Blinkers going on. A lot of changes happening. And Tyler Gaffleone will get the ride. And if you paid attention to racing worldwide, the Ammo Racing USA or Ammo Racing Worldwide, they have had a tremendous 2023. So everywhere that they've turned horses loose with a various uh, number of trainers, you have to pay attention to them. I go to Sir London, changing things up, moving to turf today. Well, I go to the favorite, although he wasn't the favorite when I picked him at 10 to 1 on the morning line. I am a little surprised that Lincoln Highway is favored right here, although I think he has a good chance, and he was favored the last time he ran at Churchill Downs. In that race at one mile, he kind of dropped out of it and got shuffled back, made a middle move, and then flattened out. I just don't think a mile is the right or perfect distance for him, but I also think the way he broke and kind of uh, had the field run away from him really compromised his chances. I look for him with a more distance to sit closer to the pace. I also think Luis Saez will kind of get him into the race maybe a little bit more. He's capable of it at Churchill Downs going a mile and an eighth. He won easily to break his maiden, um, sitting just off a fairly fast pace. And he's running to some very good horses along the way, including Wadsworth and Angliophile in uh, the Dueling Grounds Derby, which was maybe preview, that is, over at Ellis Park. Uh, maybe a little bit much for him at that particular instant, but a horse with some talent who I think fits nicely in this group. Um, for second, I look to the 10, American Diamond, who is currently 7-2 to two and getting some support coming off a victory at Kentucky Downs and hoping that that wasn't just an affinity for Kentucky Downs. He has won at Keeneland, and he did it uh, stalking a very fast pace at today's distance, a mile and a 16th, and one year ago on a course very similar to this one, listed good. His career hasn't been the same this year. He traveled to Barbados for the Barbados Gold Cup, then came right back to get that victory last out. Well-traveled horse who maybe has a course advantage here and has won two of his last three starts. So he's in good form and makes some sense. And Scott, rounding out the top three, I went to the two, Mendel's Secret, who is a huge price on the board with Ricardo Santana looking for his third win of the day. Second start off the layoff for the son of Mendelssohn, who I thought just was outrun in a sprint distance that was contested in a very fast fashion. That was his first start off, a layoff in a long while. He can show more speed in this race and I think is a lot better horse than that last one indicates. Yeah, I think a lot better opportunity than 27 to 1 tells you on the tote board, one of the bigger, big prices that we have in this race. But currently the number four horse, the 5 to 2 favorite, Lincoln Highway, homebred for G. Watts Humphrey Jr., Vicky Oliver, Luis Saez, Quality Road Colt. Race number seven, start of the final pick three of the day. Late pick three begins with race number seven at Keeneland.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's featured seventh race, the Bets, an allowance for three-year-olds and up. Turf is listed good. The rail is at 10 feet, a mile and a 16th over the good turf here in the featured seventh race. Double and pick three wagering starts the last of the day's rolling pick threes. Take out the also eligibles 13 through 16. They did not draw into the race. A reminder, the jockey for number seven, El Ajijado, is Jamie Torres. Jamie Torres rides the seven, El Ajijado. Post time, six minutes. There's the 12 horse Tiverton for MNJ Thoroughbreds in Riverside, a gelding by Expert Eye. So, a British pedigree in play here. Expert Eye, Breeders' Cup mile winner at Churchill Downs to cap off his phenomenal racing career for Judmont. Blinkers go on. This is his second U.S. start. His only other start in the U.S. was in the Jefferson Cup when he was defeated by more than looks, that really nice Cherie DeVoe runner who's being pointed towards the Breeders' Cup. So a lot changes here. The competition level, the blinkers go on, first time Lasix, and second start in the United States. I don't love this outside post position, but I do love everything I'm seeing from this gelding who just looks like your stereotypical really good turf horse. Um, Sometimes they take a little longer to adjust to North American racing. You get Flavian Pratt aboard, and it looks as if he's been training right along at Skylight uh, Training Center. So I give him a little look at 14 to 1. Let's go to the number five horse for OXO Equine. That's Larry Best, Paulo Lobo, Corrales, having himself a nice day here at Keeneland Racecourse. Spoke to Paulo, asked him about the recent good runs from this horse, and he said experience he's gotten lasix you've got to keep in mind in those last two races which may have helped him turn the corner and uh i asked him also about the running style because he showed speed in his dirt race at ellis and then was taken off the pace in his turf race at ellis he expects to him to come from off the pace as he did when he won back in july over in henderson kentucky makes a nice appearance in the paddock and out in the post parade and uh, i think the freshening really benefits a horse like this who came along in a very short period of time he's demonstrated he can run really big fresh um end point also not getting much respect even though i think his race on the turf was definitely very competitive with these and then rounding out the horses that caught my eye in the paddock the nine 
redemption time. And maybe that's a, an apt name for a horse who showed absolutely nothing in his turf debut. In all fairness, he was bumped leaving the gate, and I don't know if that's what prevented him from running a good or true race, but you have to believe that uh, his connections felt he deserved another chance on the grass. He adds blinkers today, and boy, he is a handsome horse, Scott. Yeah, that's the thing about his form is that he ran so poorly, you'd wonder why would they come back to the turf, but Brett Calhoun is such a good trainer. You've got to kind of trust the process in this situation, and I think it makes you look at him a little bit further. Two minutes to post. It's race number seven, our feature. Horses have reached the starting gate and are moving into line for Keeneland's featured seventh race, the Bets. Hardy Choice goes into the gate. Lincoln Highway comes forward. End point moves into line. Sir London goes in. Tiverton, the last one, moves in. They're at the post. And they're off. There's McKillop from the inside. McKillop and Mendel Secret are quick into stride. Mendel Secret comes forward for the lead now. Sir London moves up from between horses, and Lincoln Highway is up close as well in the opening strides. Hardy Choice now moving forward into third as they move into the first turn. Mendel Secret against the rail has the lead. Sir London second on the outside. Hardy Choice three wide in third. Lincoln Highway saving ground from fourth, moving up a spot around the first turn. American Diamond up close early on between horses in fifth. Fifth, Tiverton was a wide sixth around the turn. Redemption time also toward the outside in seventh. End point saved ground to the inside in eighth. McKillop is shuffled back into ninth. Clyde's got a gun, is racing outward from the rail up the back stretch in the tenth position. El Ahijado is against the rail in eleventh and ten days later moves up one spot from twelfth. Twenty-two point six. The time for the opening quarter and Tiverton has the lead. Tiverton leads it now. Clear by a length and a half to the far turn. Sir London challenging for second just outside of Mendel's Secret. A first half mile here in 47 seconds flat. Lincoln Highway is against the rail. Fourth running five lengths off the lead. Hardy Choice is a wide fifth. And then American Diamond is sixth in between horses. Looks for some more running room. Still six lengths from the front. Tiverton leads it by three lengths off the far turn. Sir London goes second by four. And then Lincoln Highway. American Diamond is still far back. As they move through the stretch, here's Lincoln Highway to challenge Sir London. Sir London inside. Lincoln Highway, a narrow lead from the outside. Clyde's got a gun, runs late. McKillop runs late. Third and fourth, trying to chase down Lincoln Highway, but the wire's coming. Lincoln Highway chased by McKillop. Lincoln Highway hangs on by a diminishing neck for Luis Saez in the feature.
Well, he ran to the expectations placed on him by the handicappers and horse players today. Lincoln Highway settled down on the inside of horses. The fractions were fast early on, and he was always able to maintain position. Outkick Sir London, who's down to his inside. His main threat, McKillop, who's coming to his outside eventually. But the number four gives Vicky Oliver and Luis Saez another win together this meet at Keeneland. You know, it's a heady ride by Luis Saez, too. Um, broke very sharply, but then opted to take back off that fast pace and then wait until the stretch right here to take aim. Uh, you can see he's already gotten the lead at this point, having just enough left to uh, withstand that late charge from Julian Leperu aboard Mackelop, who actually broke right on top of this field. Julian also taking back off the pace with a move that almost pays off with victory very close at the finish. The unofficial results of Keeneland's featured seventh race, number four, Lincoln Highway, finished first. Number one, McKillop was second. Number three, Clyde Scott a gun, third. Number six, Sir London, fourth. Four one three six, unofficial. Results of Keeneland's seventh race, official 4136. The official results into the winner's circle for the featured seventh, the bets. Number four, Lincoln Highway, the winner owned and bred in Kentucky by G. Watts Humphrey Jr., the trainer Victoria Oliver, and the jockey Luis Saez. Lincoln Highway, three year old son of Quality Road. Out of Frivolous by Empire Maker. Mile and a 16th over the turf listed good, one minute 42.33 seconds.
In the winter circle, the Betts Trophy presentation for the feature to the connections of Lincoln Highway. Keeneland's eighth race upcoming. This will start the last of the day's rolling doubles. Back to the main track we go. The main track listed fast. Race eight will finish in the short stretch of the first wire. Scratch the 12, fast fall. Scratch number 12, fast fall. Reminder, the jockey for the nine, Bright Spark, James Graham. Nine, Bright Spark, the jockey, James Graham. Ninth and final race, scratch number eight, she's a native. Scratch number 13, Destiny Star. Scratch the 15, Tipsy Runner, and scratch the 16, Street View. That's the ninth and final race. Scratch number eight, She's a Native. Also scratch number 13, Destiny Star. Scratch the 15, Tipsy Runner, and scratch the 16, Street View. A reminder, number 14 draws into the race. 14, Luminous Ruler will run.
Race number eight started the late daily double. Final two races of the afternoon in front of us. And this race, an $80,000 claimer, nominators of two lifetime. Winnemac Avenue on the outside for Jimmy DeVito, currently sitting at four to one. That makes him the second choice in the current win wagering. Comes into this race off of two good dirt races. Uh, two starts back. They tried him on the turf, but he remains on dirt today. Shows up in nominators of two for 80 company off of those allowance tries at uh, Ellis Park and fits this level to a T from the outside post. That's the one concern is how is he going to deal with this outside post, but he's got one of the best in the game in the saddle, soon to be in the saddle, Tyler Gaffleone, to work out a trip with his first wire finish short stretch at a mile and a 16th. And Scott, I also like the fact that he's fresh and he does have a turn of foot out of the gate. So I really think though he doesn't have to be on the lead and won't have to rush off his feet, that Tyler might be able to get him in position and in a spot where he can save some ground rather than um, have to push him and run him off his feet to get position. That outside post is a little bit of a concern, but he's kind of a handy horse. And as I mentioned, with that quickness out of the gate, um, makes him very tough. Uh, he's also a, kind of a versatile horse who has adjusted to a variety of pace scenarios here. When he won at Hawthorne, it was a pretty slow pace that he sat behind, took the lead, kind of middle of the race and went on about his business, but he's run very well in that last race going a mile with a pretty fast pace. He was up against it and hung in there very gamely. So I like that kind of versatility for him. I think Tyler will be able to kind of work out a trip even from that challenging outside post position. Princely, the one horse, was the favorite a moment ago. He's just clicked up to 7-2 to two on even terms with the 11, both sitting at 7-2. to two. But he's one that you've got to expect that will track off the pace, come from off of it down on the inside, will save ground as Julian Le Peru gets the opportunity to ride for the first time for a barn that he rides a lot for uh, these days and has for a number of years, Kenny McPeak. But he fits at this level more than anything. He's been competitive in the 50 non-2, the starter allowance conditions. So you've got to respect where he's coming from and where he's at today from a competition perspective. Yeah, I'm going to go to the other Kenny McPeak course, the six honed, who is being entered for a claiming price for the first time. He's run well against some really good horses, including a second place finish in the Iroquois and only his second career start. His game is to come from off the pace, second start back off the layoff. You hope he can sit a little closer than he did earlier in his career. I'm not sure that's the ideal running style, but I will say he has ability and perhaps will have some pace to try to run down here. Um, too good of a horse to leave out off of the drop in class. And the drop in class might just naturally put him a little bit closer to the pace. And he's a horse that is entered and will be offered at the upcoming Keeneland at November Horses of Racing Age sale. He's hip number 4266, the stakes place runner Honed, who competes today in race number eight. The number two horse is our next bit of discussion. My third choice, that's Gamer for Steve Asmussen, trying dirt for the first time, making the change with his twirling candy gelding, who's done nothing but run on synthetic and turf. His best races came on synthetic. So moving over to the dirt here today, off the claim, Steve Asmussen claimed this horse for himself. He owns this runner. So uh, working uh, lately on the synthetic, but comes to the dirt today for the first time in his career and has the pedigree to do anything. Twirling candy is one of those stallions that you'd look for for a runner on turf dirt synthetic but uh, sometimes just a simple surface switch for these horses can ignite something and that's what I'll look for in the number two horse at nine to one and I went to the three dance Samo who is 12 to one right now and that's kind of where I expected him to be um, shipping in from Prairie Meadows and also Hawthorne with some good form I'm wondering if he could be alone on the lead um, there's not an abundance of early speed in this race there are a few horses coming out of sprint races that could sit closer to the pace to make it a little bit more challenging but he's a naturally pretty fast horse and he's run well with tougher um, on the turf as well as the dirt he managed second in a non-winners of two lifetime allowance race going a mile and 70 and down that long Hawthorne stretch was able to hold on for second after leading much of the way Again, I think it's a kind of a pace situation here. If he is able to get some things early, he could definitely be a factor, and he sure looks sharp in the paddock. Fantastic betting race in front of us. A couple of 7-2 to two shots and up to 5-1 to one and 9-1 to one to round out the top three or four in the current wagering. 12 minutes to post. It's race number eight on the main track, which is fast. First wire finish. Start of the late double at Keeneland.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's eighth race, a claiming race. Three-year-olds end up for a price of $80,000 a mile and a 16th over the fast main track. This race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. Starts the last of the day's rolling doubles. Scratch the 12, fast fall. Number 12, fast fall scratched. And a reminder, the jockey for the nine, Bright Spark, James Graham. Number nine, Bright Spark, the jockey, James Graham. Six minutes to post. There's Dan Samo for J.I. Racing, J.L. Racing, and Cody Rosine, Uncle Mo Gelding, coming in from Prairie Meadows and Hawthorne for his Keeneland debut. It's pretty quick out of the gate, and that could be his best weapon. I also just love his demeanor in the paddock. He's got that energy going, but he's not getting warm. He's just seeming to channel it. I think uh, he can break quickly and take advantage of that inside post position as well as his natural turn of foot. And he just looks a very happy, ready-to-go horse. We move on to the number six horse, Honed. Again, this horse entered and will be offered at the upcoming Keeneland November Horses of Racing Age sale is hip number 4266. He's got uh, conditions left, first level allowance condition left. He's stakes placed, and he's a horse that uh, moves into a bit of an easier spot here today to recapture some form. And Scott, if you, he looks great, too, by the way. Very different uh, kind of demeanor, a very laid-back but very professional individual and a nice-looking colt. Um, if you look at the running lines of the horses he's been competing against, when he broke his maiden, he beat Anglophile, who came back to win a stake recently. In the Iroquois, he finished second to Curly Jack, but beat Jace's Road, who is also a stakes winner. Um, and in, most recently facing the likes of Forte, Loggins, Red Route 1, Two Fills, some of the best in the division. So there's definitely some class relief here, and maybe he just needed that last race. And then finally, the 11, who continues to be the favorite. He's even cleared off a bit from the, the number one horse as far as the wagering is concerned. Now three to one. Jimmy DeVito, his conditioner, telling me it's up to Tyler to work out a trip. He's got one of the best in the saddle, as we well know. I said, well, where would you like to see him? He said forward, obviously trying to get position into that first turn. So the first bit of this race, as it is for any horse race or any two-turn race, is going to be so crucial, but especially when you're drawn this far outside with the mile and the 16th and the first wire finish. I liked him a lot better at the 8-1 to one morning line odds than the 3-1, to one, I think, given his post position and the way this field comes together. 
um, you know, he definitely can win, but he has to cross uh, or overcome a few hurdles in the process here. So three to one seems a little short for me. The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's eighth race. Moving into line, race eight. Junior's Gift coming forward, along with Washington's Union. Funny Uncle moves into line. Winnemac Avenue, the last one. First wire at the post. They're off. There goes Honed, and there goes Dance Some Mo. Dance Some Mo and Honed go 1 2, joined by Winnemac Avenue, far outside, who travels third for the move down into the first turn. And then Gamer, who's back toward the inside, in fourth. Winston Wolf is in fifth. Washington's Union, a wide sixth. Junior's Gift back toward the inside, is saving ground in seventh. Funny Uncle drops back one spot behind that one in eighth position. Glenary moves up from ninth on the outside, then a gap of five more lengths back to Princely in tenth. And Bright Spark is last of the 11, the opening quarter. 23.79 seconds up the backstretch. Dance some Mo leading Winnemac Avenue by three quarters of a length. Gap of two lengths back to Gamer in third. Washington's Union center of the track is in fourth. Honed is fifth in between horses. Junior's Gift toward the inside is in sixth and running six lengths off the lead. Glen Airy seventh. Winston Wolf is in eighth. And then Funny Uncle ninth toward the inside is eight lengths off the lead. Princely is next to last to the far turn and Bright Spark is last. 48.5 Five one seconds was the time for the first half mile. Dance some Mo, Winnemac Avenue contesting the lead. Stride for stride around the far turn. Washington's Union is third. Wide again on the turn. A length off the front pair. Gamer is fourth down toward the inside as they make the move past the quarter pole and head for the top of the short stretch. Junior's Gift and Glen Airy. That pair eight lengths for the lead. Winnemac Avenue comes away with the lead. It widens quickly to five, six lengths as they turn for home. Winnemac Avenue leads it by six as they move through the stretch, then Dance Samo back toward the inside. Second, Junior's Gift is in third. Winnemac Avenue, the leader, into the final 16th. Winnemac Avenue and Tyler Gaffalione aboard Winnemac Avenue to win it. It was Junior's Gift home in the second position, followed by Dance Samo in third. Bright Spark came from last to be fourth.
you couldn't have drawn it up better with the outside post with Winnemac Avenue. He broke sharp. He wasn't rushed. He settled off the early pace that was set by the number three horse in here and Dan Samo settled off that pace and finished off the race nicely under Tyler Gaffleon. Yeah, this was a very good win for this Jimmy DeVito training. Kind of a push button type of performance from Winnemac Avenue who did exactly what Tyler asked him to do. Just sit right off of Dan Samo who was able to slow things down quite a bit and hang around round for a little piece of the pie finishing third here at high odds but no question about the winner favored Winnemac Avenue with Tyler Gaffleona. The unofficial results of Keeneland's eighth race, number 11, Winnemac Avenue finished first. Number four, Junior's Gift was second. Number three, Dance Some Mo was third. Number nine, Bright Spark, fourth. 11, four, three, nine, unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's eighth race, the unofficial winner, number 11, Winnemac Avenue, owned by Double Down Stables Incorporated of Richard Templer, trained by Jimmy DeVito, Tyler Gaffalione, the jockey. Winnemac Avenue, three-year-old gelded son of Taprit, out of Queen of the Rings by Empire Maker, the winner bred in Kentucky by Crown Chase Farm, LLC. Mile and a 16th over the fast main track, one minute 45.47 seconds. Results of Keeneland's eighth race official, 11.439, the official results. Keeneland's ninth and final race upcoming, the turf listed good today. And the rail at 10 feet. A reminder, scratch the 8. She's a native. Also scratch 13, Destiny Star. Scratch 15, Tipsy Runner. And scratch 16, Street View. Keeneland's ninth and final race. Scratch number 8, She's a native. Scratch number 13, Destiny Star. Also scratch the 15, Tipsy Runner. And the 16, Street View. Number 14, Luminous Ruler draws into the race. 14, Luminous Ruler will run. Carryover, $2,865, the carryover for the Toyota Super High Five.
Race number nine will wrap up this Thursday card, and we will have a pick six carryover regardless of the outcome here in race number nine. In fact, there are a number of horses paying four of six in the pick six. The one, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and fourteen pay four of six in the pick six for a few hundred dollars in those instances, and the five of six payoffs on two, three, and five are 2000 on upwards of $8,200. So a pick six carryover tomorrow, but still some significant money on the line in the five of six uh, situations, especially in the pick six. There's a look at Cloud Walker, the number 10 horse. This is my top selection in here uh, for Brendan Walsh and Travis Borsma's board short stables, a filly by More Than Ready that makes her debut today. She's live on the board with Flavian, going to be taking the call for the debut effort. She's 5-1 to one right now. They paid a good amount of money for this More Than Ready filly earlier this year at a two-year-old sale, $220,000. And uh, board short stables and Travis Borsma, they've invested a lot into this sport as of late. And uh, this filly could certainly look as though she's ready to give them some results right off the bat. There's Brendan Walsh, good in these scenarios, good in debut turf races, first time out situations. She's got plenty of foundation under her from a works perspective. I've got workouts going back to late July at Churchill Downs. So respect the action on the 10 Cloud Walker on debut today. Yeah. Uh I think five to one is a, a very fair price on a favorite in, in, in any of these races. I mean, she's second choice right now to the four Wonder Wave, but um, she's going to get played some more before it's all said and done. I went to a horse that was a little price, and it's a little lower than I thought the price would be right now at eight to one. That's the first timer, Copper Drop, the seven, daughter of Copper Bullet out of a Tappet mare named Teardrop, who was able to win at first asking. And all of her foals have won at first asking, and they've all been stakes winners. And really game horses, Costa Terra, Echo Again, Pneumatic, are all stakes winners and all were early bloomers. Copper Drop shows some fast works in the morning. Maybe she'd be just as good on the dirt as she is on the turf. But I think with that uh, more than ready influence through Copper Bullet, you're going to see some versatility. And Ricardo Santana Jr. going for his third win of the afternoon. Steve Asmussen going for his second win. It was a fast work on September 23rd at Ellis Park um, for half a mile out of the starting gate. I look for her to hit the blocks running and hopefully be able to get the job done here at a big price. And the other winner was with a two-year-old filly on the turf. It looks like a split of this race, but they split up this race to make two races. Makeup was that winner in race number five. So you've got to respect that. Um, with the barn going good with these two-year-old fillies in these turf events. Uh, very calm filly as she gets set uh, for this race here at odds of 7-1. to one. Let's go on to the number four horse, Wonder Wave. She is the current favorite at 2-1. to one, And the number four runner carrying the yellow saddlecloth and will be represented by Brian Lynch and Rafael Bejarano. Two months ago was her last race, close to two months ago. She's got race experience. That's why you've got to respect her. Two solid runs, both in the money finishes. Some live races that she came out of, especially her debut run in July at Ellis Park. How will she handle the good turf course that she's going to be running over here today? We'll see if that moves her forward. It's currently raining here at Keeneland. I don't think that it's going to taper off much here over the course of the next 14 minutes, just looking at the radar. So uh, increasingly wet conditions here at Keeneland for the nightcap for this turf race. Yeah, she's been inside of horses in both her runs, and it looks like she might end up inside of horses again here unless Rafael Bejarano can figure out a way to kind of work her out. She's tactical. Um, she won't necessarily be on the lead, but she won't be too far off of it and always gives a good, good account of herself. I just think there are others who definitely have potential to run big in here too but she makes a lot of sense for sure i uh, went to the one charm of the song for my second choice in here uh, daughter of midshipman out of an into mischief mayor debuted at kentucky downs i don't think she cared for it at all i will say that race i've mentioned it earlier has not been very productive but she didn't really run very well in it, so maybe it was just a matter of her not caring for Kentucky Downs at all. She could be a different horse here today. Inside post position could be a little tricky at five and a half furlongs. With, even with the rail out 10 feet, you've got to get lucky or else have an awful lot of speed, and I'm not sure she has that. But I think she could come up with a nice late kick if she can get the trip. And then finally, the number two horses we get set for the Riders Up call Modern Sound. Chris Block said this 
and I quote what he had to say to me about this audible filly. He says, I think her last race, I left her short on fitness. She was in contention coming to the top of the stretch, and then from the eighth pole to the wire, she was empty. I think the cut back to five and a half furlongs will be beneficial in this race. She's doing well right now, and I would hope that she would have a move forward in this race. And keep in mind, her debut race was a sprint on yielding ground up at Hawthorne. So a 12 to 1 modern sound on the cutback in distance, two races under her belt could easily outrun those odds placed on her at the moment. 12 minutes to post before the nightcap. Race number nine. These are two-year-old fillies getting set to run on the turf course. Good listed turf course. Rail set at 10 feet out.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's ninth and final race. The Terminus Farm, maiden special weight for two-year-old fillies. Five and a half furlongs over the turf listed good. The rail at 10 feet. Scratch number eight, she's a native. Also scratch number 13, Destiny Star. Scratch the 15, Tipsy Runner. And scratch the 16, Street View. A reminder, number 14, Luminous Ruler, draws into the race. 14, Luminous Ruler will run. Carry over, Toyota Super High 5, just over $2,800. Post time at 6 minutes. couple horses we haven't discussed at all with about four minutes to post for this ninth race. The 11, unmatched, currently 34 to 1 on the board, was actually bet down a little bit in his, her, her rather, turf debut um, at Kentucky Downs. Now, she got into close quarters in that one and flattened out a little bit toward the end, but she actually ran a much improved race um, about for three quarters of that race. That time around, I kind of feel like uh, she deserves the benefit of the doubt to come back on a more traditional turf course, especially with some given the ground. She's got a nice pedigree for the grass by Spitestown out of Medallia Doromare, and things have been going well for trainer Ben Gold. Colebrook, he had two wins to close out the card yesterday. Big price in a very wide open race on the 11, unmatched. And then the play for Tom Leach, the three, Satin Blue, uh, coming in off of a similar lackluster performance at Kentucky Downs, but Joe Sharp's horses tend to improve 12% with his maiden second time starters. You can see she's a little rowdy out there on the track. Daughter of the Factor has Warfront and Escandrea in there. And uh, she has given Louis Saez a little bit of a hard time there away from the pony. She was also a little bit green and didn't get out of the starting gate very well in that Kentucky Downs debut. But if she focuses, she certainly has the pedigree and the potential to improve dramatically. She's right now at five to one getting some play. There's a look at uh, my price play, or my top pick in here, the seven at six to one, my best angle in the race, Copper Drop, going off the pedigree here with Tear Drop, the daughter of Tappet, being precocious herself and inspiring that in her offspring. I also like uh, the Copper Bullet more than Ready line here with Steve Asmussen looking for a training double and Santana looking to complete the hat trick, just three minutes to post for this uh, maiden two-year-old race at five and a half furlongs on a good turf course.
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's ninth race, the Terminus Farm. Moving into line for the ninth race. Cloudwalker goes into the gates. Wonder Wave comes forward. Unmatched moves in. Here's Hauntress. Lola's Light moves into line. Now Cabernet. Luminous Ruler, the last one. Goes in. They're at the post. And they're off. Copper drop. And unmatched or quick out of the gate, Cabernet is right there and Charm of the Song up close in the opening strides as well. Joke Master comes away, running in the fifth position. And then Satin Blue, who is sixth down toward the inside. Cloud Walker, a lane off the rail in seventh. In between horses, Lola's Light is a wide eighth. Wonder Wave is ninth down toward the inside, eight lengths off the lead. And then Hauntress, who's in the tenth position, Luminous Ruler, is eleventh. Modern Sound is last of the 12, 22.47 seconds the time for the opening quarter. Cabernet is the leader by a length around the turn. Copper drops second a length and a half. Charm of the Song is third. Then Satin Blue in fourth. Joke Master in fifth. Cloud Walker tries to get going. Now Cloud Walker swings toward the outside. Still five lengths off the lead, but will come down the center of the course. Trying to catch Copper Drop and Cabernet. Here's Cloud Walker on the outside closing in. Cabernet, a stubborn foe to the inside, though. Cloud Walker runs on from the outside. Copper Drop between that pair. Cloud Walker, Flavian Pratt running on by to win it. Cabernet home second. Copper Drop was third. Multiple horse photo to separate fourth and fifth. What a mighty effort for Cloud Walker as she pins her ears back and she's got some lengths to make up as they straighten for home in this five and a half furlong turf sprint. She had her mind on business on debut for board short stables and trainer Brendan Walsh under Flavian Pratt. Very professional effort for a first time starter by more than ready. You can see she relishes the give in the ground and runs away from this field. The seven copper drop broke on the lead. Dropped back a little bit, came on running again through some fairly salty fractions. Does hang around for a little piece of it. And the six Cabernet made a big run at a big price, but couldn't match strides with Cloud Walker in the end.
the unofficial results of Keeneland's ninth race. Number 10, Cloudwalker finished first. Number 6, Cabernet was second. Number 7, Copper dropped third. Number 9, Joke Master was fourth. And number 3, Satin Blue was fifth. 10, 6, 7, 9, 3, unofficial. Results official for Keeneland's ninth and final race. 10, 6, 7, 9, 3. Results official. Into the winner's circle for the ninth and final race at Keeneland, the Terminus Farm, the official winner of race nine. Number 10, Cloudwalker, owned by Board Short Stables, LLC of Travis Borsma, trained by Brendan Walsh, Flavian Pratt, the winning jockey. Cloudwalker, two-year-old filly, by More Than Ready, out of Tail of Class, by Tail of Ikati, bred in Kentucky, by Charles Fipke. Five and a half furlongs over the turf, listed good today, one minute, 3.37 seconds. Late pick five pays on five of five with a consolation four of five. The pick six, no perfect tickets. There's a consolation four of six. Consolation four of six for the pick six. There will be a carryover for tomorrow's card of $24,717. 24717 the pick six carryover. And there's a carryover for the Toyota Super High Five for tomorrow, $10,353. In the Winter Circle, the Terminus Farm Trophy presentation to the connections of Cloud Walker. The second floor grandstand, including the sports bar and the mezzanine bar, remain open for simulcasting for another 30 minutes. You may advance wager any races occurring after that time. For now, on behalf of Keeneland, thank you and good evening.